It's chill. We're good. We're good. We're good. said I think this story arc is my favorite in the game so far. Ah! I'm excited! There she is, our little Hydro Archon. One of my favorite things about her so, so far is that she has a little attack and outfit change. So if you click, um, just attack once. You can see she changes her outfit. Um... <laughs> I think the, hold on, wait, how do I do this? May I present? So the white outfit is not the one that you want to use most of the time. It's gonna, because the white outfit is basically just sets up a healing turret, whereas the black outfit is the one where she is able to deal damage. But it's nice to have a, a, a healing capability on her. I still have her at level one. I haven't been able to do anything with her, but the black outfit with the, with the short hair that's where you that's the one you're gonna want. Let's get into Chapter 4, Act 5, Masquerade of the Guilty, the most recent Archon Quest. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Alright. Wait until the next day. Alright. I think let's probably go to Fontaine first. For some reason, I thought the map would open up on top. I don't know why I thought that. Maybe just because it, it has been opening straight up north. But we're almost getting back to Mondstadt here. It's been so long since we've been to the surface. Let's hurry up and... Ah! Uh, what's happening? I'm fine, thanks. But I wonder what that tremor was just now. Let's go ask the Duke! I don't know how long Mary, Mary Pete's gonna hold up for. Good to see you two. Is there something you wish to see me about? Yeah, what was with that earthquake just now? Ah, that. The tremor didn't originate from the seafloor. In fact, it seems it came from the surface. Over the years of serving as the warden here, I have developed a sense for distinguishing between what occurs on the surface and what occurs underwater. Besides, the seal that Monsieur Neuvillette set in place won't fail so easily. So the fortress is okay? If you recall our last incident, if there really were a problem, there would be crowds of inmates in a panic right now. Huh. You've got a point. Okay, seems we need to get back up to the surface and ask about what happened. Uh, by the way, do you know what day it is today? Hmm, I believe today is this month's pipe cleaning day. Wait, seriously? Ah, yes. Have you completed your release papers? Yep. Uh, it's you two. Uh, are you leaving now? She's That's always sneaking up. Today is our last day in prison. But now that <laughs> Paimon says that, it doesn't feel like we were confined here. It's actually been pretty nice. Oh, yeah. Paimon feels fond of this place now. Well, then be sure to come back and visit. I'll miss you. We'll visit the prison. <laughs> if you've signed the release papers, then you're free to go. The guards will escort you out. You're not going to see us off? <laughs> I knew you'd ask. All right, sure. Let's go. Well, you actually agreed. Uh, no worries, 
You must be busy. Paimon was just joking. Ah, so you do have a polite side, I see. <laughs> After being down here for so long, I imagine you must feel like you're lacking companionship. Shall I come along too? Yeah, don't worry, we'll come back to see you. Uh, Paimon really likes the cafeteria here. The chefs sure do know how to make good grub. I hope you won't be here as convicts the next time I see you. We'll do our best to stay out of trouble. Well, it seems our work in the Fortress of Meridian is finished. That's the end of another chapter in our journey. And since Nervalet was the one who asked us to come here, we should probably okay. go report to him now. Next up, the Palais Marmonia. You're going to see Monsieur Nervilet? <laughs> Please pass on our kind regards. I'm sure just your regards will do, no? Hmm, I believe it would be the polite thing to do. You're right. I've heard the Palais has been terribly busy these days. Tell him that I hope he hasn't been overwhelmed by the recent string of troubles. Nubilet! He looks funny Hello. sitting down. You've come at the right time, but you'll have to wait for just a moment, as there are some urgent matters I must tend to first. In the meantime, please, have a seat. If you'd like to have something to drink, let the Melusine outside know. That's all right, we just ate. Very well, then. Let's take a break over there while we wait for him to finish his work. Those flowers look like the same color as primordial <laughs> seawater. All right, I should wrap things up for now. Are you done with your work? Yes, sorry to keep you waiting. Today should be the day you were released from the Fortress of Meripede. And it appears that you've managed to complete all the release paperwork. That's right, and we came here to see you right away! Hmm, a massive whale. Do you have any idea what that might be? Judging from your description, that cannot have occurred in any ordinary waters, but rather something like the primordial sea. Speaking of it... A whale of that size and shape cannot usually be found in the waters of Tevat. Therefore, we can only assume that child is presently immersed in primordial seawater. Immersed in primordial seawater? What the hell? And is he okay? He's fallen into way weirder things and survived just fine. I'm not worried about him, and I don't think Traveler is either. Most people wouldn't be capable of entering in the first place. I'm not completely sure how he could have gotten there myself. Yes, what is it? Ah, oh, right! Paimon felt it too! We asked the Duke and he said it wasn't from underwater, so we figured you might know something about it. It turns out that I have just received a report about this particular matter. In fact, that's exactly what I was busy with a moment ago. The source of the tremor was here on the surface near Poisson. After the shaking stopped, the water levels in the Poisson area rose at an alarming rate. The water levels rose? Oh no! What about all the people there? Fortunately, the water levels only rose for a short period of time and have already returned to normal now. However, I still have a bad feeling about the whole phenomenon. If the change in water levels is connected with the leaking primordial seawater, then the situation in Poisson may be much worse than it appears. Navia should be in Poisson, right? We need to go check on her! I mean, what else could it be? I would also like to go there as soon as possible, but I'm afraid I can't leave just yet. We must immediately formulate disaster prevention plans for the surrounding coastal areas to avoid potential catastrophes. I'll have to ask you two to go to Poisson first. I'll meet you there to check on the situation once I finish things here. There's no time to lose! Let's get going! Please be careful. Oh no! What happened here? Oh no! Sure she's still... Uh, Paimon means 
we need to check on her. your balance that's a good sign uh, all right just hurry <laughs> uh, i'm not young anymore <laughs> how will i survive on my own <laughs> my desiree Looks pretty sad. <laughs> My leg. <laughs> My leg. How could this have happened? <laughs> Just hang in there. Help is on the way. You can hold my hand if it makes you feel better. Aww. She looks so sad. You're here. We heard there was a situation in Poisson, so we came as quickly as we could. Yes. As you can see, the water level suddenly rose. It caused quite the disturbance, in fact. Demoiselle! There was a wounded resident next to a building southeast of here. We've already transported him to safety, but we've run out of medical supplies. He's wounded? How badly? He fell, so it's probably a broken leg. He's pretty shaken up. When the water level rose, he desperately climbed up to the roof. Once the water receded and he saw the ground, he became terrified and eventually... He jumped down then. Find the leader of Squad One and tell him to take the wounded resident to see a doctor. He should know where to go. Understood. I'll take over his search and rescue mission in the meantime. All right. You'll be in charge. <sighs> I'm sorry. Where were we? Uh, the situation in Poisson? Ah, uh, right. Allow me to explain. <laughs> A little earlier, we suddenly heard a loud noise. At first, everyone thought that something might have exploded in the waterways. But before we knew it, water started pouring out from everywhere. The rushing water seemed a little odd, almost like the unique color of primordial seawater. Some people didn't realize the danger and thought it was just ordinary water leaking from somewhere. Everyone on the street who happened to be close to the water didn't have a chance to escape. As the water levels rose, they suddenly disappeared. They were all dissolved. Those who realized what was happening started to flee in a panic, desperately trying to get to higher ground. Many were injured in the stampede and some... some people fell from significant heights. The Spina di Rosula initiated rescue operations as quickly as possible, but there have been a lot of casualties. Fortunately, the water began to recede after some time, and the chaos came to an end. The water that flooded the area contained primordial seawater, so the lower levels of Poisson are still hazardous. To ensure everyone's safety, I've asked the people there to leave as soon as possible. No one knows if this could happen again. All we can do for now is try our best to help evacuate the residents. We still haven't completed the headcount, but we'll have some numbers soon. How awful. And all of this just came out of nowhere. It was quite frightening indeed. 
I only wish that everything that just happened was a bad dream. Is there any way we can help, Nadia? Thank you for being so willing to help in a moment of crisis like this. <laughs> you don't know how much it means to me. I really can't express how grateful I am. I mean, people literally disappear. Don't say that, Nabia. That's what friends are for. Uh oh. <sighs> Demoiselle, we've got a situation here. Uh, I'll be right there. Sorry, I, I need to go for now. Maybe she doesn't know. And off she goes. Seems it might be a while before she can take a break. Okay, the wounded are being tended to, and we finished a preliminary headcount. More support has just arrived, so I suppose I finally have a moment to focus on my own matters. Of course, we should remain ready for anything, and continue doing our best to rescue others. I'll be sure to have everyone at the Spina di Rosula ready to render assistance. Traveler, Paimon, would you two accompany me to my father's grave for a moment? Huh? Right now? <laughs> That's exactly what I just thought. Right now? <laughs> Thank you. Not a lot of people here, huh? Well, given the time of day and the whole situation in Poisson, Paimon doesn't think there'd be a ton of people here visiting graves. Right. That's how things are now. The living are so exhausted that they've no strength to spare any words for the dead. Correct. Um, Navia? <laughs> ah. J-Man Phoenix, hey, welcome back. Yeah, we're just getting started on this quest. Um, we're concerned about the primordial seawater having dissolved maybe the entire community of Poisson. Um... And might be doing more. It's feeling... It's giving Noah's Ark. It's giving a flood's about to come. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Navia's helping out the best she can, but she's, she's, she's falling apart. Navia, what's wrong? Sorry. I... I just... Malus and Silver, they won't ever come back here again. What should I do, Papa? Oh. Her friends got dissolved. Huh? What happened to them? Well, I guess we're about to find out. Everyone agreed on the rescue plan, but still, I was the one who initiated it. They were helping evacuate the residents, but they couldn't leave in time. And... And they were caught in the seawater. Well, what should we do? I've known them for so long. And I know they weren't afraid. But... But... I could at least hold a funeral for my father. Mm. And I know where he rests. But as for Malus and Silver, they're just... gone. I just can't... Everything looks so clean after it rains. Even the gravestones. I didn't expect that you'd enjoy a glass of red wine in front of Master Callus's grave. <laughs> I can understand. Besides, the scenery here isn't half bad. See, it's not just me. I always want to bring something when I visit Papa. Perhaps we might even have a picnic. He wouldn't be angry, would he? Ah, how could Master ever be upset with you, Demoiselle? Yet the cemetery is the home of those who have passed, is it not? Everyone ends up here sooner or later, no matter who you are. Buying yourself a plot in advance, are you? <laughs> no need yet. But when I do, I 
hope you'll let me be buried beside Master Callus, Demoiselle. Aww. Hey, stop joking around. I'm quite serious. That way, it will save us both the trip to see each other whenever you visit your father's grave. Aww. That makes sense. In that case, can I be buried on his other side? After all, besides you, Demoiselle, the two of us could certainly be considered Master's closest companions, no? Personally, I believe we fill those shoes just fine. <laughs> Why are you bringing this up all of a sudden? Seriously. All right, all right. I'll remember your requests. But I'd really prefer not to talk about this stuff. And what do you mean by saving me a trip? I'd make the journey even if I had to visit you two somewhere else. Aww. I promise to let them rest in peace here. But here I am breaking that promise. Well, <sighs> I'm sorry for letting you see me in a mess like this. I don't usually cry, really. Paimon doesn't know how to help you feel better. But, well, she understands how you feel. Does she? I'm being serious. Does she? I don't think Paimon has family, and if she has family, I don't think they've been lost. J-Man said she's given four-star vibes. Yeah, unfortunately, every time a character is, like, too pretty, I'm like, oh, they're gonna make her a four-star. <laughs> the only one I was wrong about was Yaimiko. I thought they'd make Yaimiko a four-star. For sure. I was certain they would, but she's five star. Um, I had always thought I could make my wishes come true. But now that I think about it, that never solely relied on me. Many things can only be accomplished with someone else's help. Luce and Silver have helped me so much. But by contrast, I could do nothing for them. Well, I'm so sorry. You can spend as much time as you need here, Navia. We'll stay with you. That's nice. Thank you. Right now, you don't know how much that means. By the way, you can have a look at this. It's a list of victims from the incident that took place here. Obana, Khan, Burnett, Giverny, Francine, Karina, Daisy Ray, Joanville, Julianne, Esson, as well as Malus and Silver. So, everyone else is safe. But still. It's okay. I, I know what you're thinking. And you're right. We lost Malus and Silver. But we were able to save more than we anticipated. The overall outcome indicates that the cost was worth it. Right! Don't think that way, Navia. One person might be saved at the expense of another, sure, but that isn't something we should ever consider a trade. Yeah. Malus and Silver were not the price for saving anyone. They're heroes! You're right. Thank you, Paimon. What you said just now was pretty amazing, actually. I'll remember your words. Oh! Uh... Really? Seems you've become more eloquent in the time since we last met. <laughs> Here. Ah, is everything going well on your side? Yes, my people are carrying out the mission according to your request. All the residents of Poisson have been evacuated, and we are preparing to relocate them to higher ground. Mm -hmm. As for these supplies, we have everything taken care of. There is no need to worry. Thank you very much. Wait, do you two know each other? We just met recently. Right, Miss Navia? Hmm. Usually, I would call this a coincidental encounter. Mm -hmm. That doesn't quite fit this time. 
Besides, it never even crossed my mind that a Fatui Harbinger would come looking for me. It's never good. Thanks to the Knave, Spina di Rosula received generous support from the Fatui, which allowed us to complete the rescue and evacuation work so quickly. Mutual aid is essential to fostering positive developments. We were already in the area, in any case, so it was nothing. That said, I must say that you're a lot sharper than you let on. I'm sure you understand what I mean. I apologize for all the ways in which I tested you previously. We've never worked with a Fatui before, and it's extremely important for us to know who we're working with. Well... My subordinates have reported that Fatui soldiers have been observing water levels and taking head counts in various locations. I hear that they've also prepared a large amount of emergency supplies. I'm quite surprised. This is nothing to brag about, nor do I intend to. It is simply the way of powerful organizations to act forcefully, whether they are doing good or ill. You've witnessed that firsthand, in any case. As I've told this traveler before, I know of the prophecy, and I intend to prevent the impending disaster. Lending your organization a hand was a natural first step in accomplishing that. As such, do not be troubled by this token of our sincerity. Perhaps one day, you'll also be able to help me in the same way. Without your help, there would have been many more casualties. I won't forget your kindness. Furthermore, I sincerely regret what happened to Malus and Silver. I only wish that my people could have arrived a little earlier to prevent this from happening. Don't say that. You and your subordinates did everything you could. Mm. As Paimon said, Malus and Silver didn't choose to sacrifice themselves for any specific person. And they weren't the price paid for other salvation. They chose to become heroes themselves. I've never liked hearing people put it that way. It's like trying to relieve pain by saying some noble-sounding words. But right now, there's nothing more suitable. They really did become heroes. You're right. I'm sorry for your loss, Miss Navia. She's so good at sounding sincere. Water is life to Fontaine's people. And it also spells disaster. It's no wonder that people always say that prophecies represent fate. Fortunately, I've never been one for such opinions. So, you're one who will try to change fate then? Of course. That is why I'm going to Hotel Bouffe de Thé. I still have some things to take care of, and the children need my attention. By the way, Traveler, Paimon, one more thing. Then we'll just... Uh... Huh? This isn't right. Paima thought you would ask us to walk with you for a moment so you could tell us something in private. <laughs> that is a clever and useful conversation technique, which I do like to use when necessary. <laughs> but there's no need today. It would not hurt to have Miss Navia listening in. Traveler, I'm sure you remember that I said we could work together when we had the chance. You and I both know that there may be issues with the Primordial Sea. Previously, it was the Fortress of Meripede's Sluicegate, and this time it was the water levels in Poisson. These are both signals. I don't trust her for a second. Indeed. Allow me to share the latest intel I've received from the House of the Hearth's Intelligence Network with you. Hmm. During some recent investigations, a child claimed to have discovered some ruins near Poisson. The ruins date back to ancient times, and seem to be worth investigating in many ways. Judging by the dating of the ruins, they may be related to the prophecy and the coming crisis. The situation is becoming more urgent, so any pertinent information will prove extremely precious. My people initially came to prepare for ruin exploration. Unexpectedly, this disaster struck. And at present, we're all busy prioritizing the rescue effort. So that's why the Fatui were already in Poisson. I wanted to take the children along, but unfortunately, Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet have all been dispatched to higher ground to assist affected residents. Linny told me that outside of the house, the person they trust most is you. Which is why I want to give you this task. 
She said, remember how much you like Lenny? You like Lenny, right? You trust Lenny, right? The House of the Hearths members see each other as family. But Lenny, Lynette, and Fremini said that they also see you as such. Even though you are not from the house. Laying it on thick. I'm sure you already understand how earnest they consider their friendship with you to be. Oh! That somehow makes Paimon feel kinda happy. That was intended. The intel I just shared about the ruins could fetch a high price. Oh, but since the children consider you family, it's only natural that I freely share it with you. Wow. Got it! So all we gotta do is go to some ruins, right? We can handle that. Excuse me, but may I tag along? You wish to join, Miss Navia? But are you sure you're up to exploring some ruins? You need to rest. Well, I'm sad, yes. But I can't just go back and plop myself into a chair by the roadside and do nothing. <laughs> There's no point in being depressed while we still have a disaster on our hands. Good point. As my father's successor, I must live up to the hopes he had in me. Besides, I'm also doing this for myself. I need something, a distraction, to keep my mind off Malus and Silver. Since you put it that way, I have no objections. What do you say, Traveler? Her design is so cool, dude. Just even that, like, little hair wrap, it looks like a feather, but also kind of like a skeleton hand wrapped around it. I believe her lore has something to do... I could be wrong, but I believe her lore has something to do with the, uh, the ballet... The Black Swan. And it's played by the same ballerina, the, dark, the Black Swan and the White Swan. And that's why she's black and white. It looks cool. All right. The ruins are to the south of Poisson. Here's the map. Okay, the three of us will handle it. Come on, let's pack up and get going. And she's on her tiptoes, too. Like a ballerina. So pretty. It's so wild you can see the silhouette of Sumeru from here. So, are these the ruins the knave was talking about? Whoa, talk about old. I have a feeling. They seem to be pretty ancient, all right. We're gonna get to fight. Let's go in and have a look. Yeah, buddy! Just be careful. Careful's my middle name! Uh-oh. What do we have here? Yeah. You can run! Yeah. There is no escape! How dare you? Embrace the ice! Ayaka said, take a seat. Contaminated by primordial seawater. Yeah. And a lot of it, too. A Fontanian would most likely dissolve the moment they fell in. Yeah, you shouldn't be here, girl. No Fontanians allowed. <laughs> right! You can't go down if there's primordial seawater. It's too dangerous, and it won't be any help for you to just stay here. I'm wrong. We're not saying you're useless. It's just that. No, you're right. 
I can't do anything in this situation. I'll leave this to you. I mean... Well... That complicates things. Maybe the only way left is forward. In that case, do you want to wait for us here? Mm, the water levels here are unstable, and there's a chance the water will rise. So staying here wouldn't be safe either. I'll go together with you. Perhaps we'll find the exit just up ahead. <laughs> All right. Come with us for now, then. But please be careful. I can't believe we didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. Stay away from the water, okay? No one get close to the water, Navia. Wait. There's something wrong with this bridge. Run for it! I'm trying. The cut screen won't let me. <laughs> I'm running in my mind. Oh no, Navia, no. Navia, no. Oh no. Demoiselle? Huh? Demoiselle, what are you doing here by yourself? Would you be standing here till dark if I hadn't come to get you? Uh oh. Maybe she just wants some time to herself, Malus. Hmm? Oh. Uh, was I. Was I sleeping? Yes, it would appear so. Uh, I must be tired. That's quite possible. However, you were the one that suggested we go out for a walk. Oh, right. I nearly forgot. <sighs> it must have slipped my mind when I dozed off. I haven't had a nap today yet. Uh, have I? This is a familiar feeling, yet something's a little strange. Is something the matter, demoiselle? Oh, uh, no. No, I'm fine. I was just trying to recall why we came out for a walk. Do you remember Mr. Giverny? He'd requested our help before with foreign merchants who had a debt dispute with him, and we'd resolved the matter not long ago. We were headed to see how things were going with him at the moment. Ah, oh, right. Yes, I remember now. Oh, Miss Navia. Ah, uh, Mr. Malus, and Mr. Silver, too. <laughs> it's good to see all of you. Uh, uh, how have you been? I've been great. Thanks to your help, those bothersome merchants finally realized that I wasn't the one they were looking for. Why, I wasn't even the guarantor for that person. Mm. They were knocking at my door day and night. Even my neighbor, Obina, was getting fed up with them. Sometimes, force is required to calm someone down and get them to listen to what you have to say. Oh, <laughs> That's right. Oh, by the way, Burnett, what was it that you wanted to give to Miss Navia again? Oh, oh, yes. One moment, I have it right here. Are these the names of the dead people? Miss Navia, these are some flower seeds that I prepared. Please take them. They're a very good variety, and they'll become very big and beautiful once they bloom. I don't know what we would have done without your help, so this is a little token of our appreciation. I hope you won't refuse. Ah, did you cultivate them yourself? Thank you so much. I'll certainly take them. Baloos, we do still have some empty flower pots at home, right? Why, we can have as many pots as you'd like, demoiselle. Perfect. In that case, we'll swap out some of the decorative plants for some of Mrs. Burnett's flowers. Very well. Wait. Something seems to be off here. Excuse me, madam. If I'm not mistaken, your name is Burnett, correct? That's right. Is something wrong? 
Uh, no, it's nothing. This is the first time we've ever met, but your name seemed familiar to me. I must have heard it when I was discussing things with your husband previously. Mm. I've heard this name before. Sometime recently, I'm sure of it. Oh boy. And why are there so few people around here? Where did everyone go? We must mind the time, demoiselle. We still have important things to attend to today. Huh? Uh, we do? Like what? Well, now, did you forget? Miss Nadia, here you are. I've been looking for you. Please, come to the Opera House. Your trial is about to begin. My trial? Wait, well, why would I need to go to the Opera House? Yes, she's right, demoiselle. It's just about time now, so we should get going. Oh? Uh, all right, then. Is this a dream? Look, it's Navia! She's here! And her two attendants are with her! <sighs> Goodness, everyone's finally here. There sure are a lot of people here to see the trial. And they all seem to be oddly... excited about something. Hi, Eve Karina. Desiree. Joyville. Yeah. Julian. Essen. Why are so many people here? Yeah, I had a feeling. And all the dead people. Why do I have no recollection of this case? And as for the judge. Uh, huh? Where's Mr. Nervillette? Please sit in the defendant's seat. Don't worry, Silver and I shall accompany you. All right. But are you sure you can stand behind me? Typically, it wouldn't be allowed, but today is an exception. Hey, what kind of place do they think this is? Come on, do they have any idea what they're doing? Seriously? <sighs> Enough with the whispering! <sighs> Could someone please tell me where Monsieur Nervillette is? And why I'm standing trial? My dear Miss Navia... Have you not yet realized what you've done? In that case, allow me to explain. As all here know, you are Master Callus's successor, the head of the Spina di Rasula, someone held in high regard by every soul in Poisson. After you took over the Spina, you treated all of us just like the late Master Callus had. If anyone in need reached out to you for help, you responded. Not only you, but your butler, your subordinates, nearly everyone in the Spina di Rasula fought for the well-being of those in Poisson. <laughs> Wait a moment. Aren't you just proving that I'm a good person? Yes, correct. Absolutely right. And that is why you stand accused. You have helped so many people get through so many difficulties, you are one with us. We are inseparable. We are one big family, all of us who are from Poisson, inextricably linked. And with you being so important, we couldn't possibly do without you. Therefore, this fair and honorable court shall declare you guilty, and you shall stay here. You will be together with us forever. Huh? What? Are you saying? Uh, everything you have said is correct. I have indeed done a lot for my hometown, and I would be willing to be with you all, but what is the purpose of having me stand here like this? What is there to discuss? Oh, well, if that's what you think, then I have no further comments. <gasps> How wonderful, Miss Navia! <laughs> <laughs> I know all these people. Why are they laughing? I seem to remember now. Yes, I get it. This trial is... Wait just a moment. This isn't right! Uh, Malus? What was that, Mr. Malus? Our conclusion is very clear and unanimous. Let the court judge her now. She's guilty! 
Stay here, Navia! You're one of us! Demoiselle, don't admit guilt. This trial means to keep you here forever. I wish to exercise my right to defend Our Lady. Mistress Ronville, you only know of Navia's goodness, but nothing of her utterly independent mind. She was born a free and independent spirit. She has never been tied down by anything. Indeed, even the death of Master Callus couldn't stop her. Her actions cannot serve as proof that she identifies herself as part of any group. She merely acted as an individual, extending her hand to help others. Please do not mistake her actions as being otherwise. Really? As an individual, you say? Don't forget, we are all Fontanians here. This is the nation of justice, the nation of Hydro! Even if Miss Navia only voluntarily rendered her assistance, that doesn't change the fact that her beautiful soul must return to everyone. Water accepts all, blends with all. It will surely accept her kindness. Everything is measured here in the nation of Hydro, and in the end, everyone shall meld together. Thus, when a unanimous opinion emerges, that opinion represents justice. Now I speak for everyone. Our opinion is consistent. Navia should stay. We and Navia are one. And you would call this justice? Preposterous. You are merely jealous that Demoiselle still has a chance to exist as an individual. Have you forgotten how much you all once longed to become individuals, to become independent? Do you mean to defy our justice? If your justice is flawed, then why should we acknowledge it? As you said, we can also have our own justice. Silver and I shall defend Demoiselle. And that is how we will enforce justice. Ugh, my head... It hurts. Demoiselle. Silver, it hurts. My head is spinning. All I can see is stars swirling in front of me. I remember now. Everything that seemed odd from the very beginning. Karina, Desiree, Joyville, Jolien, Essen. And Mr. Giverny and Mrs. Burnett, who we met earlier. Even Malus and Silver. I don't want to admit it, but... But they're all dead. Don't be afraid. And don't admit guilt. We will protect you to the very end. Absurd! Who are you to say that she cannot be judged? We are the majority, and in the Nation of Trials, the majority is absolute justice. We are the will of all. Don't let them escape! We shall keep Navia here with us! Mr. Malus and Mr. Silver, must you be so stubborn? How could the two of you possibly hope to stand against the Collective? Do not resist. This judgment is fair and just. Navia belongs to us. After all that happened, she should not be left alone in Poisson. What are you saying? No more excuses. She says we're jealous. Jealous? <laughs> How could she possibly be an independent individual? What's with these people? Who's jealous of her? She belongs to us, Miss Navia. Silence. Uh, that's... Uh, Monsieur Nervillette! Such commotion is prohibited in the court. The accusations you just presented are nonsense and cannot constitute a proper trial. The court will adjourn for the rest of the day. In this, I shall hear no objections from any unauthorized party. Our thanks, Monsieur Nervillette. Please leave with me, Miss Navia, while there is still time. But... Go on now, Demoiselle. This is your only chance to leave this place. What, can't bear to leave us behind or something? Loose. <laughs> My apologies. I couldn't resist making one little joke once I realized that... 
This shall be our last goodbye. A loose silver. Quickly, you must come now. Goodbye, Demoiselle. Farewell. That was sad. Uh, no, wait! Just a second! Uh, Navia? You're awake. Good. Uh, I must have been dreaming. Malus and Silver were still alive, and they were... They were defending me at some insane trial. It looks like you're all right. Did all the sad feelings cause you to have a nightmare? Paimon could give you a hug. The ruins you were exploring suffered a cave-in. When I arrived, I found you falling toward the water. You were just about to be dissolved within, but I... Hmm. What did you do, hmm? What is it? I think I saw two Oceanids protecting you. It was only for a moment, perhaps even a fraction of a second. But they gave me the chance to retrieve you. Were it not for their intervention, I would not have been able to rescue you before your consciousness dissipated. Wait, did you say Oceanids? You mean like what happened with Vache? I mean, yeah, I think when the Fontanians dissolve into the seawater, they take on the form of a hive mind in the form of an Oceanid. So we've seen that before. Perhaps those two Oceanids were the people you saw in your dream. I always told them that they didn't have to protect me. To think that they'd keep doing so even after death. Please come with me. Nevelet, are you okay? Hmm? Oh, I am quite all right. Perhaps there's something we could chat about? Why do you look so stiff all of a sudden? Hmm. Oh, Paimon knows. You're the type who feels awkward when there's nothing to talk about, right? I merely thought that we should give Navia some time to herself. Huh? Why didn't you just say so then? Don't you think it's even more awkward to call us over like this and then have nothing to talk about? Hmm. I suppose so. <laughs> By the way, Sejuin sends her regards. Y you remember her? Ah, Sejuin. I hope all is well with her these days. Her work in the Fortress of Meropede has not been too much for her, has it? No way, don't worry. She's doing fine down there. She's an amazing head nurse. Not the only nurse. I see. Well, that is good. I have always worried that Sijuin would need a lot of time to understand the world of humanity, just as I have. Oh, and the Duke also says hi! Even though Sijuin made him do that, he hopes that you haven't been overwhelmed by all that's happened lately. Thank you. I have indeed been busy lately, and I also hope that everything is going well in the Fortress of Meropede. Uh, he still doesn't know what to talk about. Uh... Let's chat about something else, then. Or maybe... It would be okay if you just were quiet. We don't have to fill silence with meaningless conversation. It's okay to just exist. So, Nevelet, uh, you're probably quite the swimmer, huh? Mm hmm Yes, of course. <sighs> Is it going anywhere? Uh, let's try something else. Um, how did you find these ruins? Did the knave tell you? Yes, in fact. I had arranged to meet you in Poisson, but when I arrived, I discovered that the Fatui were helping the residents evacuate. They had even transported a large quantity of supplies to the area. Amid my astonishment, I ran into the knave, and we had a chat. She informed me that she had asked you to investigate the ancient ruins here. Yeah, we originally planned to meet up with you, but we thought you might still be busy with all those official documents. We didn't think exploring the ruins would take very long, and who would have thought you'd wrap things up so quickly?
Looks like we've reached the end. This is the place. There should not be any other hidden spaces in the vicinity. The path sure had some twists and turns, but it turns out that this place isn't actually that big. Stone slates? It seems like they were put here as an offering. The prophecy? Uh, could we take them down and have a look? Uh, perhaps we should just leave them be for now. You want to take down stone? Hmm. There are four locations in total, but only three stone slates. The slate that should be in the first empty spot is missing. And the surrounding walls also show signs of damage. Hmm. There's something written below. Let Paimon see. Uh, reason dictates that this nation be destroyed. I shall record the history of its future here in its past. Uh, say what? It feels like someone left these slates and these words here for a purpose. But does he mean that Fontaine should be destroyed? That would fit the circumstances dictated by the prophecy, yes. Indeed, the slate's contents correspond to it. Take the second slate, for example. There's a person kneeling here. She seems so dedicated. And there's a whole bunch of other people behind her doing the same. It looks like Celestia, She's kind of. She's facing this... Uh... What is this? Some kind of island in the sky? And is that Lady Farina in the third image? Did the Hydro Archon fall into the water? And is that a ring of people around her? Paimon doesn't quite get it. Are they all in the water? The fourth image. I know this one. This exactly matches the content of the prophecy. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Hmm. More information should be hidden in these slates, but I fear I cannot easily uncover it. Most likely due to us missing the first slate. I am very sorry. Don't blame yourself, Monsieur Nervalet. Deciphering ancient stone slates isn't one of your duties. Ooh, Paimon's getting the chills just looking at these slates. He has so many cool abilities. He says that it's the history of the future, right? That means the prophecy's sure to come true. I really hope it doesn't mean that. Still, Paimon feels like these images are kind of weird when you look at them together. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> That's right! If the images are in chronological order, shouldn't the fourth, the waters drowning Fontaine, come before the third? Where the Hydro Archon herself falls into the water? And yet the order is reversed here. If we go by timing, Lady Farina only emerges in the third image. That means that the person in the second image might be the previous Hydro Archon. Egeria, then. I had never met her. But her appearance here does match the records. Echeria? The previous Archon kneeling before the floating island in the skies, as if confessing a sin. Did she herself commit that sin? And if not, why would she be in such a posture? Also, I'm still wondering why these ancient stone slates are here at all. Judging from their contents, could this place be the origin of the prophecy? <laughs> Does that mean that someone, or some people, once saw these slates? But who would have created these slates and left these words here? <clears throat> I kind of thought it was Nouvellet. <laughs> it seems that any further clues will have to come from Farina. In that case, there's no time to lose. There's nothing else to be gained here, so let's head back first. Yeah. We'd better get somewhere safe for now. I 
agree completely. Who made the slates doesn't matter. It's just will the, the prophecy come true. That's all that matters. But it's funny because I was like, it makes no sense to pull a stone slate out of the wall. And then someone was like, we should pull this stone slate out of the wall. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll catch up. Never mind. Let's split up here. I'm going to check on what's happening with the Spina. You know how it is. There's some things you just need to be there for yourself. You still have energy for that, Navia? Paimon's already beat! <laughs> just head back to the Fluvsandra and have a rest then. Thanks for keeping me company all this time. I'll depart as well. Thanks for your hard work today. Rest well, everyone. Traveler, I will go talk to Farina tomorrow morning to ask about the stone slates. I'm sure that you're concerned about this matter as well. If you have time, drop by my office. I will share the results of our discussion with you. Are you really gonna talk to her about this directly? Will that be a problem? Ugh, Paimon's getting a little scared now that it's come to this. She has long been harboring secrets and will not give them up easily. Which makes it all the more my duty to ensure that she understands the present situation. Alright, we'll leave it in your hands then. You're probably the best person to talk to her anyway. I will be carefully considering my words tonight. Traveler, Paimon, our safe house at the Fluvsandra is always open to you, as ever. <sighs> Alright, I'll be on my way then. Ah, we're finally back! Welcome back. We've got a special menu prepared for you two tonight. Yay! And there's good food too! Navi, uh, no, the boss is the best! <gasps> oh my oh, goodness. That voice. Could that is be? Is that who I think it is? Is it Mona? Huh? It's you two. What are you doing in Fontaine? <sighs> the only original character I don't have, Mona. <laughs> Seriously, nobody just uses a scry glass whenever they've got time to just see who they'll meet on the road. Still, we didn't expect to see you here. Uh, wait, you're not a Fontanian, are you, Mona? Well, I have some business to attend to here, so I booked a hotel in the city. I was just out for a stroll when I bumped into you. Quite unexpectedly, if I might add. Why did you think I was from Fontaine, though? Is that because Magistus doesn't sound much like a mom's dad or surname? D can you answer the question? Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Girl! Well, I used to have my own surname, which was, well, some other thing. Either way, the old hag told me when she took me as her disciple that the first step to being a great astrologist's pupil was to change that name. There was nothing for it, really. She really is amazing at astrology, so I changed my name to what it is now according to her wishes. To my surprise, however, Magistus is not the name of some ancient house or clan. Uh, it isn't? Nope. Although it is used by us in place of surnames, it generally just means great. Oh. Interesting. Wow! Imagine including a boast in your name. Wait, are you gonna have to put that into your genealogy as well? I reckon so. In any case, I'd give my disciple a name like this as well, if I were to take one. And may I ask what your master's name is? Astromancer Barbaloth Trismegistus. Whoa, that's a long one. Does it also mean great or something? My name means Mona the Great Astrologist. As for the old hag, hers is, in plain speech, the thrice as great scholar of the stars. Just take it as a title specific to astrologists. Thrice as great? That's so heavy. Yeah. I know, right? <sighs> That's just how she is. <laughs> she used to call herself Magistus, actually, but once she took me in, she changed her name to Trismagistus. Talk about excessive. 
They have such an interesting relationship. Magistus is thus the calling card of our school, so to speak, which makes it about the same as a surname. It's all right if you don't get it. You can look into it further should you need to study astrology more deeply. Hmm. How about triple strength traveler? That's terrible! <laughs> but anyway, you're not Fontanian, are you, Mona? You're from Mondstadt, right? Yeah, make her answer well, the question. I was born in Mondstadt, yes. My parents migrated to Dorman Port, and I traveled with the old hag for a while, after which I settled down in Mondstadt City. Oh, that's a good thing then. At least we know you won't be dissolved by Fontaine's waters. Hmm. Did she specify she I'm was sure born in Mondstadt? A bunch of things have happened here in Fontaine, right? I know you're not a local, but I'd avoid getting too close to any water that looks strange all the same. There's something ominous about it. Well, the water, I mean. Someone catch this girl up. <laughs> that was the main reason, yes. Just a while back, the Steambird invited me to take part in a panel and speak about the circulation of the prophecy as an astrologist. The invitation was sent quite early on. I don't think anyone expected Fontaine to be in this much trouble. What do you make of that prophecy, Mona? Just tell us what you think as an astrologist. Your word would go a long way to make things more certain and less... scary. That's a good point. What I can tell you is that I'm an astrologist. And that this prophecy concerns the fate of Fontaine, even that of Altevat. Ascertaining this is akin to reading the fortune of the whole world. I'm afraid that this is not something that just anyone can do. If I could do it, you would no longer call me an astrologist, but a visionary. Okay. But on the flip side, the prophecy is so huge and powerful that it must surely come from a powerful visionary. Okay. Its contents involve the fate of the world. Disregarding it would be a mistake. You'd also think it'd be a hugely visionary? easy to read, since it Sounds would be really huge. powerful and all, but does such a person really exist? Of course. The old hag could do it. And I'd bet there are others amongst those Hex and Zirkle colleagues of hers who could do something similar. Yeah, okay. Huh? Uh, are you sure? Hmm. Well, girl, if you can't do All it! All right, I'll help you. It isn't often that I see you with such a serious look on your face. I'll tell you once I hear back from her. Thanks, Mona! You're amazing as always! Oh, well, this is something only I can do after all. So yes, your praises are quite welcome. That's the greatest of astrologists for you! Of all the people we know, you know the stars the best! Indeed, indeed. <laughs> That's the spirit. Oh, sorry. I came to see what all the commotion was about. If there's anything you need, do not hesitate to inform the Spina di Rosula. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Guess we were getting a little too carried away there. Well, I'll go tend to my own business now. If I receive any news, I'll be sure to come find you two again. And there she goes, quick as rushing water. And here we are with the Spina guy giving us suspicious looks. Oh, okay. Right, but we were able to recruit Mona's help, didn't we? Our Fontanian friends will thank us someday. I'm just glad she got her date to, to admit that she was a, from Mondstadt. <laughs> Good morning. Kind of. To be honest, I'm still feeling kind of sleepy. <sighs> but it's time to get up, Traveler. We agreed to go see Nivellet, so let's pack it up and get going. <sighs> You're here, finally. Uh-oh. Uh, is something wrong? Monsieur Nivellet and Lady Farina, they, they seem to have gotten into a dispute. Please go see for yourself. Hi. <sighs> this should be interesting. Like I said, I've already explained everything! And yet the problem has not been properly solved. There is little space for excuses between us. It is not my intention to offend you, but please, tell me where you stand. You are the Hydro Archon Fosalor, are you not? Look at this! 
This is a list of the victims from the recent Poisson incident. <laughs> We did not arrive in time to avert this disaster, and I will not have it happen again. <sighs> I will say this once more. You must tell me everything you know. Yesterday, I found three stone slates in some ancient ruins near Poisson. Do you know anything about those? Seriously? You're questioning me like this is a court case now. I don't know anything about that. But you found them in some ancient ruins, you say? That's correct, which is why I came to ask you some questions. There should have been four slates, but one of them was missing. The other three featured different images that seemed to correlate to the prophecy. <laughs> the prophecy? The second of these slates depicts the previous Hydro Archon Egeria kneeling before a floating island in the sky, as if confessing something. Do you know nothing of this either? I don't. I've never seen such slates. I'll ask you again. Do you really have no information regarding the previous Archon? My deciphering of the slates indicates that the Hydro Archon Egeria once had to confess to, or apologize for, a certain sin. If anyone would know about it, it should be you. All gods don't have the same secrets, you know. She was herself, and I'm me. Is it really so strange that I know nothing? I understand your concerns, but... I'm sorry. I just don't have anything to tell you. <sighs> Forgive me for saying this now, Lady Farina, but I have long known of your various secret investigations into certain matters. There are several indications that you have been investigating the prophecy on the sly. This is not strange in itself, considering that you are the Hydro Archon. But it is strange that you should also claim to not know any of Egeria's secrets, as well as do nothing following your inquiries. You have never been as superficial as you have presented yourself to be, nor are you a fool. And yet, your behavior is very inconsistent. watching me all this time, have you? I didn't think you were that type. <laughs> you... Well, since you know about my secret investigations, then you should know I'm actually working to take care of it. There's no point questioning or suspecting me. You're the Eudix, but you're still my subordinate. You should be following my lead. Just trust in me, your Archon, and do as I say. Never mind whether you can truly convince yourself to or not, it'll all turn out fine. That's all I have to say. We do not discuss this matter again. Oh, <laughs> the opera's about to start. Toodles! Did Farina not notice us standing by the door? Wonder what's up with her. She was smiling. Huh. She didn't seem in the mood to care if we were listening in or not. I assume you've been outside for a while now? Oh! You noticed! <laughs> Seems Farina didn't even realize we were here. She just didn't wanna. She was in a great panic. Though I cannot discern the reason. We Our never can. Our discussion impasses time and again. A state of affairs that we cannot allow to continue. Still, I do not understand. Dialogue is the basis for understanding. So why did she keep refusing to engage? I think she's real, real Delulu. And I think that has been her safety for as long as she's lived. Is to just put on a show. And I don't think we're bringing her down from that anytime soon. Everyone in her inner circle has noticed that she is hiding some secret. The issue is her attitude. I fear that she will not reveal anything unless absolutely forced to. We may have to create a situation in which she will have no choice but to speak. 
Oh? Like what? Normally, people will only reveal the truth when standing trial. Perhaps we must have the Hydro Archon experience just such a scenario. But Farina's seen so many trials, and she's really good at dodging questions. How do we make sure that she won't just slip away at the first chance she gets? We will need to consider this thoroughly, join forces with various parties, and then do what we can. <sighs> If at all possible, I would prefer to recuse myself from this affair, but we must prevent the prophecy from coming to pass. Yeah, we know that's not going to happen, This Ubilet. may be cruel to her, but all Fontaine is in crisis. The information a god possesses is too precious, and so we must take a chance on this. I mean, you did try to talk to her. Privately and nicely. Uh, I don't think anyone can blame you. Hmm. But who will lend us their aid to do such a thing? Um, I think we know a few people. Okay, I think we know a few people. Mm hmm Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, that's everyone, huh? Speaking of which, it was pretty smart of you to think of hiding here. Poisson was just involved in a disaster, so it's presently devoid of people. That na And here you are, drinking tea I'm like sorry. it's the most natural thing in the world, huh? Wow, wow. And that's what family should do. Sit and enjoy a leisurely time together. <laughs> it's nice to enjoy tea here, you know? Care for a cup? Ahem. <clears throat> Lend me your ears, everyone. Hmm. Or perhaps one of you might like to start us off. How about you, friend? Uh, me? <laughs> no, I don't think I can. Hmm. Uh, then, how about you, good sir? I fear that I will cause the mood on this boat to become as somber as it is in court. <laughs> well then, I guess we're lucky we've got a local like me to organize things. Wonderful, the spotlight at last. I guess I'll be facilitating things from here. That was a little long-winded, don't you think? Oh, <laughs> you might be right. You killed her dad! To cut to the chase, don't be rude. our friend here, the Traveler, has brought us together to discuss something. As for what that is, well, uh, let's start by saying that we'll be pooling our efforts together to create a series of traps. Oh, how intriguing. Well, it's just an expression, really. One that I just learned from Chlorand. And used on the spot. So, let's invite her to explain in detail. A round of applause, please. Huh? Didn't you say that you would be facilitating this? Oh, come now. Your work doesn't involve much public speaking, right? This is a good chance to practice. You might even pick up some fancy oratory tricks to impress your boss with in the future. I see. And what does my boss say? Hmm. <laughs> he is glad that you consider him your boss. Do go on. In that case, <clears throat> do any of you have experience hunting? Not that I recall. Fremenet and I once used a wooden stick in a basket to catch wild rabbits when we were younger. As for Lynette, um... Oh, right. You were sick that day, weren't you? Uh, I've also gone diving to catch some fish before. Does that count? Uh, nope. I'm afraid not. Very different skills. You may or may not have heard, but Fontaine once played host to a group known as the Marachose Hunters. Though that was their name, they did not hunt animals, but rather various monsters left behind by the ancient dynasty of King Remus. Today, Fontaine's monster population has already thinned greatly, so the hunters have blended back into society, taking up arms in other lines of work. They even left a unique methodology of hunting in their wake. A trap comprises of the following components, bait, a trigger, and a containment device. Sometimes a lethal implement will also be necessary to deal with the prey. So, if we were to build a trap together, right now, 
What would you choose to build it with? For me, I would prefer something basket-shaped. Pigeons and rabbits will see the bait and naturally enter the snare. Our line of work requires a deft hand, and we're some of the best in the industry, so you can count on our techniques. You used some of those techniques while moving the people of Poisson, didn't you? My subordinates mentioned that you even performed some magic for the bawling children. Yes, and I even managed to gather some intelligence in the meantime. I'm quite the multitasker if I do say so myself. I'm afraid I can't claim that as my strong suit. I prefer more stable methods, like placing bait in the water and waiting for the fish to come within reach. That's the kind of method I would count on. He's such a sad voice. Calm and steady. Exactly the kind of person who would catch loads of fish. And I can be their assistant. With discretion, I'm sure. Hmm. I'd probably use some sort of mechanical animal. Papa once bought me some small clockwork squirrels, mice, and such. When placed in the forest, they can attract others of their kind. I remember that you liked those too, didn't you? I did. And that would be a good way to go about it. If they're realistic enough, animals of the same kind will follow them all the way to the trap. What about you, Monsieur Nevillette? I fear I do not have any related experience. Hmm. That makes sense. You usually solve problems directly, without the use of any such tricks. What use but does do a dragon have, have for hunting? For you, monsieur. If we were to create a trap now, how would you design it? Hmm. I would like for it to be effective, but bring no harm to the prey. A more gentle trap would be ideal. Hmm. Kind, as always. However, our intention doesn't necessarily change the containment device and the type of implement we need. If we wanted to kill the prey in one strike, we would need a powerful implement. However, that also goes for prey that must be captured and safely contained. Wait, why is that? Only a hunter who's a true expert at subduing their prey can snare it without harming it. The line that divides life and death is often exceedingly thin. Uh, so are we going hunting together? Huh. We hadn't thought of seeing ourselves as hunters. It kinda works, but maybe it's still not the best metaphor. I mean, it's what you're doing. If our means of capturing and dealing with our prey is to put them on trial, and the hunting metaphor is actually quite accurate. But we shall require much more courage than any hunter to judge a god, a being whose seat is an exalted throne. <laughs> is there no character that can make someone tell the truth? No, uh, no sort of similar, um, golden lasso of truth situate? No? Okay. Okay, well, I guess we're hunting a god then. Oh, so that's what's going on. Sounds very interesting. You agreed to it before you knew who the target was? Oh my goodness. Lauren's hunting metaphor was just that, a metaphor. You will not call this a hunt because this is not what you should do at present, nor has the relationship between you and Farina reached such a dire stage. Um, we've 100% betrayed Farina, are ganging up on her to corner her to make her tell the truth. We are no longer Fiorina's friends. We are quite literally ganging up on her now. It's hunting her. It's okay that it's for a good reason, but it's what's happening. What you need is simply the secrets she is keeping. Well, ah. Attempting to take her secrets is an act of sacrilegious disrespect but must be done to prevent Fontaine from sinking into the waters as foretold into the prophecy. I mean, I get it. The stakes are, they're high enough, you know? Desperate times call for desperate measures. I get it. This is neither hunter nor prey. There must be a trap. That is all 
That is what you will need. I mean, yeah, I thought backing her into a room with the Hydro Dragon would have been sufficient enough enclosure, but we just let her run away. So maybe let's not do that next time, because I'm pretty sure Nouvellet is stronger than maybe anyone else in the game, it seems like. I mean, Nouvellet spent enough time with her that he should be able to speak freely around her and have her respect and be able to hold his own against her in battle, if not completely demolish her from what we've seen. But yeah, I guess he wants to distance himself from that because he's going to have to work with her afterwards. I mean, I feel like this should be less of a trap and more of like an intervention. Like, hey, we all care about you. We will kill you if you try to leave the building. But we're here to talk to you. <laughs> like, like I, I don't think you have to lie about what your intentions are. You can be like, we, this is so serious that we're going to use all of our powers on you to make you stay put and tell us. Like, we, like, that's what has to happen now. Because it's too dangerous and we're concerned. Let's talk. Like, it feels, it's, whatever. Where's Nahida when you need her? But I guess I felt like that about other Archons in the past, like. I feel like Venti, the god of freedom, would have been useful in Inazuma. You know? The, the gods don't really travel to other lands, so far as I've seen, except for... Venti travels to Liyue for festivals and wine. All we need to do... All we need to do is ply Venti with... Well, Venti's not going to be useful here, is it? Venti and... I feel like Venti and Fiorina would be a terrible team. They'd be like, let's not go to work today. Okay! <laughs> They're the chaotic two Archons. I don't want them sitting next to each other. But Nahida... Yeah, she would be a good pairing. Uh, did you just pour some tea? Paimon didn't notice you doing that at all! Uh-oh. Uh, then what's that? Paimon's never seen that cup before! Don't be frightened. I'm just joining you two for tea. I merely refrained from saying anything till now. Oh! Uh, who's that voice? Uh, oh. Aw, have you forgotten me already? Wait, you are familiar. You're the voice we heard from the sky in Sumeru. <laughs> the voice from the sky, hmm? I fear that description is wrong. Though, not completely wrong. Huh. You're feeling lost now, just as you were feeling previously. I sensed that confusion and thus came to you. Guiding people is an irresistible hobby of mine, after all. Hmm. Consider me a passerby. Just accepting a commission from my friend's disciple on a whim. Yeah, I think it's Mona's master's... I, I had a feeling we'd see someone from the, the Hexen Circle, because... In Nouvellet's office, we saw... A gramophone and we only really ever see one of those when Alice is speaking to us or ready to make an announcement and Alice potentially one of the strongest magicians we've yet to meet in all of Tavat having a gramophone in the office of the Justice of Fontaine means she can speak on the Justice in Fontaine. And if all the other magicians sitting at the Hexen Circle with her are of equal power, for lack of a better word, then I assume they have other ways of traveling without being seen as well. I forget what each initial of the Witch's Table does, um, but Alice... Alice is known for rearranging things, and one of them is known for creating things. She created Albedo. 
And one of them is known for hydromancy, which might be the one that we're talking to now. It does kind of sound like yay. Or yay. <laughs> Mickeloid! Welcome back. Um, we've just heard a strange voice. Friend's Disciple. So this is one of the friends of Mona's master. I'm assuming because she said she sensed confusion that like Nouvellet, she's able to sense strong emotions through water. And that's how she's able to sort of use her magical specialty. And that's how she sort of appeared in the form of water, because that seems to be what she's adept at using. But it does make me scared that like all the witches can hear what we're saying at any point in time of the game, even when we're having secret meetings. Like, that's wild. That's wildly concerning, one should say. The enigmatic inn of Hexen Circle. Allow me to ask you, will Fontaine's prophecy come true? Yeah, why not ask everyone? Shoot. The prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. We've heard it called that before. Then is there any way we can stop it? I believe you have witnessed a failed attempt with your own eyes. Can everything in Tevat so easily be changed? No exceptions, huh? Ah, so you've caught on. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could Ooh. things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? Are the things that you shall see different from the fate that the gods perceive? Okay. What is she talking about? It all sounds really impressive and important and stuff, but... It also sounds kind of scary. Oh. I believe that you understand, right? Some things are insignificant, but others you must reach out to change. Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Hmm. This was good tea, by the way. Thank you for your hospitality. Well, that'll be all for today. The voice. It's gone. Creepy. Hmm. Oh, I want to hear someone talking. I wonder if T has anything to do with a clue. Hey, it's you who's getting lazy, okay? Well, I see I've walked in on some lively banter. Mona! Fine, just fine. I went to take part in that Steambird panel. It turned out to be more interesting than I expected. Not all Fontanians are pessimistic about this. One journalist mentioned that sitting around and waiting for the end to come would be wrong, and that they should make their own rescue preparations. I agreed, so we had a brief chat with her. Uh, did she have pink hair by any chance? <laughs> Why, yes, it was Charlotte. You remember her, right? You know her? Oh, daredevil journalist. I'm in full support of her view. Aww. Prophecies are very important, but... How can people allow their lives to be commandeered by just a few words? That's right! Paimon's glad to hear something sensible for once. Ah, yes. About what we had discussed before. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't reach the old hag. I'll try again tonight, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. Hmm. It's interesting that Mona wasn't able to reach her master. That's interesting to me. Huh? 
This is probably the first time that's happened to her. Goodness gracious. Her friend reaching Are out. Are you instead. serious? She said that even the god's gaze has blind spots. Pretty bold if you ask Paimon. Most people would believe the gods to be all-knowing, right? The Hexen Circle members are certainly anything but ordinary. Hmm. As for the mage named N, the old hag has mentioned her a few times. She said that N's sense of direction is incredible, and that she loves guiding those who are lost. That's good. But I've never met her, and if she were still alive, she'd... <laughs> well, suffice it to say that the hag's at least a few hundred now, and N's been around for longer than that. Whoa, the Hexen Circle sounds like a scary group. But they must really stay in shape to live so long. Their abilities alone are pretty terrifying. Hmm. If she came to see you personally, then the problem you're facing must truly be of great importance. Well, it's not like Paimon could understand anything she said. Yes, she was quite cryptic, but I suspect she means that there is still a way to turn things around. Mm -hmm. She didn't say when or what that would be, though, so... I don't think she can. I think there are Perhaps rules to the game. Perhaps it is something that you cannot know right now. Yeah. Traveler, Paimon, are you two all right? Oh, we're fine. We're just a little down right now. It kind of feels like the end is coming, you know? <laughs> I do know. I see. I feel that same sense of desperation, too. I guess you could consider me someone who has often witnessed fate. So far as I have seen, it cannot be swayed. But even so, I still hope for and believe in miracles. Astrology is eternal and rational. But fate may not be. It is cruel, but it can also be beautiful. Perhaps that's what N was trying to tell you. Not to lose heart, and to believe that what you are seeing playing out before you is not yet set in stone. I did originally think of steering clear of all this, but I couldn't. Even if this is all futile, I still wish to help everyone. If we don't struggle to the last, then how can we face the end when it comes? Huh. You do have a point. <laughs> there I go, talking about astrological principles again. <laughs> Sorry about that. The moment I start talking about work-related stuff... I oh, I need to get going. It was worth trying to comfort you, even if only a little. I believe that you'll help those who are struggling in the same way I did. I think so too, Mama. I suppose that might be why we always seem to meet by coincidence. <laughs> She just gave us a hint because Paimon astrologers don't believe in coincidences. Said, but also kind of sad, too. Hey, Traveler, Paimon suddenly feels like going outside for a walk. Let's go. Okay. Let's walk around the city, shall we? There's a few spots we always like to walk by. When it comes to fate and prophecies, I think there's always a little bit of wiggle room. to change things. And I think that any really powerful, all-knowing being like in, or maybe even to a lesser extent, Mona, could be privy to and bound to information that they know, so they can't really share it. But I think not being super sad about it, like being like, oh, I wonder if there's any way around it. I think that is encouraging and a good sign. I feel like her clue wasn't just in saying, maybe there's something you can do. I feel like her clue was also in her tone of voice, which is, I know something, and look how not concerned my voice is. It's a fairly simple thing because of how calm I am. Like, I feel like she's being like, it's something little. It's something you will see. I am confident you will see it. Uh, what's going on? Let Paimon see! You mean maybe the we're finally famous? The fortress of Meripede has continued in its noble autonomy. 
But that does not mean that others cannot interact with it. My recent attempts to enter the fortress bore little fruit. Huh. Guess Charlotte still hasn't given up on that. Thus, did an Outlander friend become the focus of this report? A blind adventurer with their white fairy legends trailing in their wake. It is said that this mysterious traveler once visited the underwater fortress. So while the fortress's interior remains a mystery behind closed doors, do not fear, for the tales of the traveler contain surprises in spades. Journalist Charlotte's biggest scoop yet, The Traveler's Trail, World Walker. Huh. Charlotte took so many awesome photos of us and we never even noticed her. She hasn't been able to get a hold of anything at the fortress, so since we're easier to find, she's using us as the subject matter instead? Ugh, seriously? Well, fine. Those headlines and photos do look cool, so Paimon will forgive her this time. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can get her to spill some more beans, as they say. Now I want a Fiorina teacup. It's a good Comic-Con Artist Alley opportunity. That's the limited edition, only 16 slices a day cake! Okay, cute. It was so delicious the last time we tried it. Despite the tense situation we were in, let's give it another go. I'm sure it'll be great. Wasn't that the cake that got us sent to prison? I feel... I mean, listen, Paimon, who am I to rain on your parade? One slice of cake, please. Uh-oh. <gasps> Someone showed up after all! Oh, wait, you're the one from the Palais Mermonia. Oh, are you here to buy cake, too? <laughs> it seems Monsieur Nervalette was right. You really can eat. Wait, did I really say something like that? Good thing God you isn't here. That's right. Even he has his own preferences when it comes to food. As for me, I love the cake and coffee here. Do you come here often? Mm -hmm. Usually every day. Every day? It's part of my daily schedule, apart from work. I shall have my cake and coffee. Sounds great. Uh... I love cake and then coffee. Then what if someone told you one day that this place would be closing soon? And you wouldn't get to eat cake here anymore. Paimon. What would you think? Paimon. But why would it close? Why would you? Well, Paimon doesn't know either, but... Paimon! Maybe... Maybe the waters will rise tomorrow. You know, like in the prophecy. Bro. Oh, the prophecy. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, I haven't paid much attention to that. No, still, even if there'd be no more cake tomorrow, that wouldn't keep me from having some today. <sighs> No, no. It's the same for eating in general. You might not be able to eat tomorrow, but if you can do so today, then you should carry on. That's what people call living, you know. <laughs> huh. I like the melusine. Don't be sad. Excuse me, could I have two more slices of cake to go? These two slices are for you. Sijuin said that this kind of expression you're making is what humans call being sad. <laughs> Oh, you know Sea Twing? I sure do. Mm -hmm. She was born before me, and she sometimes comes to the surface to teach us things about humans. She said that humans are creatures that are saddened easily. Yes, and you can only lift their spirits by feeding them delicious food. So please try the cakes here. You can I only lift their spirits by feeding them. You do try to stay in a good mood after eating, all right? Mm -hmm. Bye. She said, I have to feed this animal. <laughs> and there she goes. Amazing. Right, let's dig in. I'm unsure this cake will be delicious. Oh my goodness. <sighs> it's more delicious than last time. And the flavor gets even better with a sip of tea. It sure would be nice if we could come again tomorrow. Sure would be nice if we could always eat delicious food here. She's so melancholic about something that hasn't even happened yet. Isn't Paimon supposed to be our companion? Like, 
you've been through adventurous stuff before, girl! Oh my goodness. Wow! If it isn't the Traveler and Paimon! Oh, have you seen the article I wrote about you? Ha! You've got some nerve! You just used us to make some quick mora! I love that the Traveler asked to negotiate a profit split. Oh, you needn't worry about that. I heard that you were in Poisson some time back, so I sent you a letter to discuss just that. It appears you didn't receive it, though. It's all right, though. I've set aside the amount intended for you. I've even set the table with some food. Really? Oh, you're the best! <laughs> you're almost a little too easy to win over, Paimon. If I were a journalist with ulterior motives, you'd be in trouble now, you know. Oh, Paimon knows you're not like that. Still, what brings you here all of a sudden? Were you looking for me? When Mona mentioned you, we thought of coming to see you at work. <laughs> I see. It seems you've already bumped into Mona here in Fontaine. So she mentioned me? What did she say? She said that you're a real daredevil of a journalist. <laughs> nice. In which case, can this daredevil journalist dare to request an exclusive interview with the legendary traveler and Paimon? <laughs> always. Huh? So your article in the paper today doesn't count? She's always looking for an interview. Oh, of course it doesn't. That was more like live photography. What I'd like to do is dive deeper and ask you to talk about the things you've seen and experienced. I mean, we didn't consent to any photos being taken of us, so more like surprise photography. But okay. Yeah, are we even qualified enough? Why not? If I say you're worth an interview, then you're worth it. But not right now, of course. I'll need a few days to prepare. She's so cute. Oh, in that case, we'll just chat when you have the time then? <sighs> oh, so that's a yes? Ooh, splendid! I'll tell the editor-in-chief immediately. I'll have to apply for lighting, a venue, some props, and... <laughs> oh, so much to get done now. Talk to you later. Wait, Charlotte, Paimon's still got a question for you. Hmm? And what's that? If, just for example, Fontaine were to be flooded tomorrow, what would... Huh, that's the Sorry. prophecy you're talking about, isn't it? I mean, I do hear about it often, but I've never once thought that the day could be tomorrow. If you're seriously asking, then I might try and think of a way to leave Fontaine. Oh, but I'm still a journalist, first and foremost. That means I have a duty to be reporting from the scene. And secondly, I wouldn't forsake my homeland that easily. From what I've seen, most people don't know what they'd do should the worst come to pass. In truth, it might be better just to behave like normal rather than worry over such an end. And that's how I feel. So in all likelihood, I'd probably still be prepping at the office for that interview of ours. I know what you're thinking. That sounds a bit sad, but I've always believed that it's best to do what you enjoy. Just think about it. If this nation really were to be suddenly destroyed tomorrow, but I still successfully finish an exclusive interview with a truly unique person, then the story I would wind up writing would truly be timeless. And then do you know what I'd do? Well, I'd write that story, send it for printing, and use messenger pigeons to get copies out to the various nations as soon as possible. I'm not a dreamer, nor am I a workaholic, but I do love my job, and I'd be proud of leaving such an article behind. I guess you could say that I was born to be a journalist. <laughs> but anyway, that's my answer. And on that note, I'll get back to my preparations. I do appreciate that's they didn't make her a workaholic. so nice. All of a sudden, Paimon actually kind of envies her. Anyway, let's go and take a look at the sea, shall we? Hmm. Aw, thanks, Scott. The sea breeze and scenery can be a pretty soothing combo, huh? Hmm. Paimon's been thinking. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. If it wasn't Fontaine, but all of Tevat that would be destroyed tomorrow, where would we go and what would we do? No, Paimon should ask, if you could choose, what would you like to do? Interesting question. 
suddenly trying to consider what to do was pointless. We've always been moving to the next destination, so we haven't spent much time thinking about these kinds of things. We didn't have to either, with us always being on the road and whatnot. Aw, that's a not that's a non-answer. Until the moment comes, I think I'll keep journeying on. Well, didn't they say at the beginning of the game when the twins are together, we've traveled many worlds together? So I think she would just travel to another world if Tavat got destroyed. But the thing is, I think the... Whatever her name is, Protector of Heavenly Principles, said that she couldn't leave this world. And it's like, well, if the world's destroyed, girl, <laughs> what other choice do you have? <laughs> um... It does leave a problem of we don't know how to get her sibling back. That is still a problem. Um, so maybe that's why until that moment comes, there's no point in thinking about it because her main purpose is to find her sibling or to reunite with her sibling, right? That's the whole point of really agreeing to stick around this world because I think she could- I think she can leave without Paimon and without her sibling. I think she has the ability. Or she did. I don't know if she still does. You mean, still traveling? Cherishing every single moment that I have to look upon this world. See, she doesn't seem concerned that this world is the only option. Huh. Wait, isn't that what we've always been doing? It's interesting that they say that because I think one of the only and definitely the last thing that Lumine says to Aether is, we've always had enough time. Almost as if her relationship or her connection with her sibling rises above time or is somehow different than time? Better than time? Stronger than time? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like they just dropped some lore on us and I don't understand the connection. The next few days are just as calm. Charlotte comes to find you and conducts the interview. All right. <laughs> Having finished her business in Poisson, even drops by... Oh, Navia drops by to take a photo. Okay. Hmm. Ah, feels like you'll grow mold if you stay here long enough. <laughs> but it's still better than the Fortress of Meripede, that's for sure. Her voice Not is so good. Not only damp there, but salty too. Ah, oh, so the two of you are still here. Wonderful. Oh, you're from the Palais Mermonia, aren't you? Yes, I'm Isadora. Monsieur Nervillat sent me to look for you two before. I heard that afterward you went to the Fortress of Meropede. So you're under the impression we might be wanted criminals? <laughs> Not at all. I'm well aware that you're friends of his. Actually, I'm here to pass along a message from him. Yes, inside the Opera House. The Mari Chaussee Phantom has declared the incident a small-scale riot. A riot? Well, that said, I don't personally think it was that serious. Lady Farina was watching a performance at the Opera House, and while she was resting during an intermission, some other audience members suddenly started harassing her. Loudly accusing her of doing nothing about the prophecy crisis. And before she could respond, others started to join in. Hmm. The crowd continued to grow, and protests against the Hydro Archon started to break out. So people have started to put the blame on Farina. Guess they finally found an outlet for the pressure they've been under due to the prophecy. I agree. People will naturally rely on gods, as is customary. But the moment people feel threatened, gods are also the first to be blamed. 
so what happened after that? Is Farina okay? Seeing that the situation was spiraling out of control and that further argument was pointless, she claimed that she'd gotten tired of this and left in a hurry. The Marichose Phantom had their hands full maintaining order and did not catch where Lady Farina had gone. Only when things had stabilized did we realize that she had gone missing. So, you mean she's still missing? That's right. The Marichose has dispatched many people to search for her, but we don't have any leads yet. I mean... That said, I don't think there's much to worry about. She is a god after all. Yeah. Even if she were to fall into the hands of rioters, what could ordinary people do to her? I would really like to see. Because... Because you keep... We're under the impression girl can't fight at all, so... W would like to know. Good. Monsieur Nervilad sent me to tell you about the situation, but he didn't say anything else. Don't worry. This is more than enough to go on. Thanks for keeping us informed. Ah, oh, is that so? Well, all right then. In that case, you two take care. I'll be heading back to the palais now. <laughs> well, sounds like we should hurry over to Poisson then. If we know Farina, she won't try to fix things in this situation. Instead, she'll look for a place to wait out the heat. And, as we also know, she may be loud and dramatic, but she doesn't have a heart of stone. When Nervale was talking to her in the Palais Mermonia, and she heard about Poisson, she couldn't hide her sadness and remorse. Yeah, but... Which one of her personalities was that? It would be that? hard for her to ignore being accused by the public today. Paimon thinks Farina's probably taken the opportunity to slip away to Poisson and try to relieve the sense of guilt that she's feeling. Huh. Well, what do you think? Paimon knows the answer, of course, but Paimon can do the analysis to back it up, too. Cool, huh? <laughs> In that case, there's not a moment to lose. Poisson, here we come! <laughs> That's Farina, right over there. She really is here all on her own. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Should I just give up? This is all meaningless. What was meant to happen did happen after all. Everyone's dead. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Give up, Farina. There's no point in holding out. <sighs> I'm sorry. But what can I even do other than to repeat meaningless apologies over and over? <sighs> Don't worry, Farina. It's just us. <laughs> so, it is you, blonde traveler from another land. Why, I almost thought you were summoned from that mob of my ignorant subjects. Come to kneel and beg for my forgiveness. Farina, you were crying just now, weren't you? The tear stains on your face are obvious. Uh... What do you mean, tear stains? Oh, oh, I remember. The show at the Opera House earlier this morning was so moving. I'm still trying to process it. <laughs> Who did that uncivilized rabble think they were? Disturbing my enjoyment of the arts. They even dare to doubt their archon. I must teach them a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine their twisted and frustrated faces once they realize that I'm nowhere to be found. Oh, and I'm sure Nouvellette and those people from the Marish to say Phantom are freaking out right next to them, too. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> since her whole theme is water and crying, I can't help but notice that 
Her eyes have teardrops in them. Her buttons are in the shape of teardrops. And now that I think about it, the blue highlights in her hair can be mistaken as almost like tear stains. They really did a beautiful job with her design. I... Uh, of course not! Hey, there she is! The Hydro Archon's over there! Quick, after her! Uh, Farina, those people seem to be after you. Uh, they are? <laughs> They're just some rabid fans who want to cut the line because they haven't been able to meet me in person, aren't they? <laughs> That's against the rules. I can't let them get their way. Farina just ran off! Quick, we have to catch up with her! Is running really the only option? Forget the teacup idea. She's a track star. This should be the place, right? Hey, Farina! Get her a, a track uniform. Quick, come to Paimon before the rest of them catch up to you! Farina, uh, track star. Wh what? What is this place? Hurry, they're almost here! Girl! Fine, fine. I suppose haste is warranted. Lead the way. Oh my god. Isn't she a couple hundred years old? <sighs> we better get answers. In there with a with a box of fish. Oh boy. I went exhausted. I'm so tired. <laughs> I totally thought they'd caught me. Uh, no, I mean, I merely gave in to the sheer enthusiasm they displayed. <laughs> uh, you were right. Yep, that's a good girl. Uh, what's happening? The ground's shaking. Is it an earthquake? Yeah. A quake of this kind preceded the flooding in Poisson, did it? Aren't you a god? Aren't you supposed to know? Be. It's happening again. Well, there's no need to worry too much about that. Nevelette's made some emergency plans, so the evacuation should go a lot smoother this time. Yeah, I hope you're right. But the people of Poisson, they've already... Hmm. It's true. I've been investigating the prophecy for hundreds of years. I once had informants all over to Vat, searching for clues and feeding information back to me. I've tried all kinds of ways, too, to hold back the sea. Anything to keep the coastline from advancing. But all my efforts proved to be futile in the end. Really, the truth has been clear to me for a very long time. We cannot make an enemy of the Divine. No matter what we do, the will of the Heavenly Principles will have its way, and the prophecy shall be fulfilled. I do gotta say, though, I do like that she hasn't given up trying. She's never given up trying to find a workaround, trying to find a loophole, trying to find a way out. A cheat code. You know? <laughs> Give up. <sighs> I do love the sound of that phrase. It would mean finally coming to terms with fate, but also for me to finally be free. Indeed, I've thought about giving up so many times, especially after we almost lost Poisson. Fate is really unreasonable, isn't it? 
It has no heart and obeys no rules. The prophecy has only just started to come true, and so many people have already lost their lives. But just now, it all became clear to me. I still don't have the right to come to terms with fate on behalf of everyone else. As long as the final moment hasn't come, it's still not too late. Don't worry. I... I will keep hope alive for everyone until the very end. <sighs> well, that's enough for now. I got the impulse to play the stricken maiden, but honestly, considering my rank and station, that wasn't a good fit at all. <laughs> Don't take any of what I just said seriously. How could I possibly let Fontaine fall to the whims of trivial prophecy? Come on! Paimon could have sworn you were actually being honest just now. It's almost like there's more than one personality rolling around in there, isn't there? Although I don't know what you might be keeping from everyone, your people are more than willing to share your burden with you. Share my burden? That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. Well, there are ways to lessen the load. Just share it with me. I'm what you'd call a witness. This isn't the first time that Traveler has been called a witness to an Archon before. Zhang Li made a big deal about Traveler being present as a witness, being very, very important to him. A witness? Huh. Yes, I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? If that's the case... Yeah, maybe we can get the Traveler to see a different spectacle or a different show and witness a different show, therefore changing fate somehow. I... Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my opening performance. Sheesh. Now, without further ado, we may proceed to the trial of our god. Ah, so this is what it is. Yes, you deserve praise for the effort you took to raise the dramatic stakes. Do not forget, however, that I am Fosalor, the god of justice. The embodiment of justice itself. Does it not strike you as even the least bit absurd to bring the very concept of justice to trial? May I interpret these words as your refusal to stand trial? In that case, you will have the opportunity to defend your honor through a duel. Oh! You... you would draw your blade against a god? What god? I just see a little girl. <clears throat> I see. It seems like you have made up your mind. Yeah. I can't believe it. She... She just surrendered! <sighs> hmm. What the heck is going on? Did I just see an Archon surrender to a... A human? She thinks she's only good well, as a sacrifice for some reason. Humiliating. Lady Farina, what is the meaning of this? Uh, it would 
would seem that there has been a misunderstanding. To be clear, the raising of both hands is not always an indication of surrender. Looking for excuses again, huh? I raised my hands just now to indicate my acceptance of the trial. No duel shall be necessary. I will admit that I've been running away for a long time. I'm sorry, everyone. I was unable to protect the people of Poisson. It is my duty to stand trial for my crimes. You are not the only ones to be disappointed in me. I, too, am exceedingly disappointed in myself. <sighs> but now, it is time for the Hydro Archon to show you her courage and resolve. I, Farina, will use this trial to show the world the true meaning of justice! This time, I will protect you. Yeah. Applaud and rejoice. One of the most outrageous and fantastical arcs known to the opera Epicles is now unfolding before your eyes. Mark my words. This shall be one of the most exhilarating and brilliant shows ever to grace the stage of Fontaine. The trial of the Hydro Archon, Fosalor, will now begin! Woohoo! Oh, now we're making history! I mean, I'm excited. Why does it feel like Farina just took over the whole thing? Like, come on! Didn't she just get forced to stand trial for her crimes? She's also, an actor. Even though she's still acting super dramatic, she is taking this seriously this time, right? Oh, I think so. All right, then. Who will be my opponent in this trial? The court asks the prosecutor to please take the stand. Oh? Is that so? Very well. Then please speak, witness of Tivat, my accuser and fated opponent. Witness of Tivat. Hmm. I don't know. It just seems like she's always been told she has to sacrifice herself. So maybe also, that's why she doesn't fight. Please allow me to ask as a final question before the trial begins. Just how much work did you do to force me onto this stage? Well, we did do a lot of prep after the meeting that day. I can go over the tasks assigned to the Spina di Rosula, since they were rather straightforward and easy. Navia, the president of the Spina di Rosula. Most of the people who participated in the disturbance this morning were my subordinates. They changed into plain clothes and came to the Opera House as regular audience members, waiting for the perfect opportunity to incite insurrection against you. The people's resentment against their Archon has been building as more and more of the prophecy is fulfilled. A spark was all we needed to turn smoldering anger into a flame. Moreover, according to our understanding and analysis of you, when something like that occurred, you would likely flee the scene and head to Poisson by yourself. So, we arranged for a second group to lie in wait there. So, you mean... The ones who scoured the settlement for me were also from the Spina? And their goal was to force you to step into the giant magic box so you may personally participate in the greatest magic performance in all of Fontanian history. It was a great callback. That's right. That house was a magic box, rather than someone's residence. As the super ultimate version of the setup that I used when I first performed at the Opera Epicles, the volume of the box was increased by a whole order of magnitude, and the distance it traversed was the entire gap between Poisson and Arrhenius. Its cargo, of course, was an Archon instead of a human. My thanks, Farina. Without your help, we could never have pulled off such an extraordinary performance. Uh, you're welcome? Of course, this performance was only made possible with Father's support. The House of the Hearth spent a massive amount of labor in Mora to pull this off. 
We had to select a location, construct a giant magic box, dig a tunnel, and open up a path through the water. It was a lot of work for all of us. So, in other words, the earthquake that we felt within the giant magic box was just a normal tremor from the transportation of the whole house? Ah, uh, the lack That's of right. the earthquake is giving her confidence. She's gonna change now. Now that she thinks that the world isn't ending, she's gonna change. <laughs> then, I can guess Nervilette and Cloran's parts. You gathered a crowd, prepared a stage, and made sure that the champion duelist would be immediately ready for a fight. Also that as soon as I appeared on the stage, the trial may commence without a hitch. Am I right? Yes, that is correct. Well, Clorand, I must commend you for your courage. Only the most outstanding champion duelist in all of Fontaine would accept a duel with an Archon without flinching. Thank you. As for you, Traveler, I suppose your role was to keep me distracted with conversation once you found me in Poisson. You'd make sure that I didn't notice anything amiss before revealing yourself as my prosecutor once we'd arrived onto the stage. I mean, you were bait. Willing or not, you were bait. Oh? But I think the Traveler did the best thing by trying to get her to, to, to speak. I still think that's the best choice. We'd hope you share your secret with us. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Is that so? Then I suppose I must have missed my final chance. <sighs> it's fine. It matters not. What's done is done. The stage is already set, so there's no reason to disappoint the audience. Let's see this trial through to the very end. I think everything Fiorina says from here on out is important. I think it's a Madam way out. Prosecutor, please allow me to pass this along. This is a document that Miss Charlotte applied for and received permission to share with you during the trial. According to her, it should speed up the proceedings. Huh? Charlotte wanted to give us something? Oh, so she's here too! Hey, Charlotte! Oh, let Paimon see. Uh, isn't this the exclusive interview that she did with us before? Oh, wait. Then that means this document is a perfect timeline of everything that's happened ever since we stepped foot in Fontaine! So in other words, we can refer to this anthology of evidence every time we want to use something from our journey as evidence for an argument! Okay. Sure, I can see that. Let's quickly confirm the information in it. Just think of it as a refresher, alright? You defeated the Hydro Archon in the very first duels you took part in at the Opera House. That's one for the history books, all right. Oh, boy! Just made me think of the, um, the summer event last year when you could go to, like, different islands and each character had an island. Mona's Island was a bunch of puzzles and there were sky puzzles. And she's the first one. Er, it's with her and, and Scaramouche. The artist formerly known as Scaramouche. Uh, in 1.1 version says, the sky is false. So if a witch tells you the sky is false, or if a witch shares something like that with you, then it's probably really meaningful for a future event. It's probably a path you can take. The prosecution and the defense are both in position. The trial shall now begin. <laughs> oh, come on, Nervilet. There's no need to repeat all the unimportant legal leads. Just fast forward to the part where the prosecution lays out my offenses. 
as the defendant and the lead actress of this performance, I still haven't even been informed of my supposed guilt in all of this. Of course, it is only natural for humans to struggle to understand the actions of a god. However, you will need more than that to convict me of a crime. That's true, but my charge here is unrelated to your conduct as an Archon. Instead, I would like to charge you as a fraud who has never been the Archon in the first place. Wait, what was that? Lady Verena's a fraud? Hey, I came here thinking that we were going to try the Hydro Archon for forsaking her duty, but did I hear that right? She's not our Archon at all? Charge accepted. Lady Farina, do you plead guilty to the charge? Uh, <sighs> Lady Farina. I plead not guilty. How can I be guilty? There is no way that I, Fosalor, otherwise known as Farina de Fontaine, a member of the Seven and the Regina of all waters, kindreds, peoples, and laws of Fontaine, could be anything other than your true Archon. Yeah, I think she's trying to get out of the Archon Even title. Though Lady Farina can Somehow. be rather eccentric, isn't it going too far to doubt her very identity? Yeah, I've never questioned her identity either. Sure, Lady Farina can be super irresponsible, but but what grounds does that prosecutor have to make such a huge claim? I have cause to believe that common sense will prevail in this case. Many of the members of the audience have known me as the Hydro Archon ever since they were born. There would be no fooling their memory. See? <laughs> Even the Oratrice has decided to show me its favor! Are you sure you want to commit to a charge that will never be upheld? If you wish to drop the case, I can promise you as the God of Justice that you will not have to face trial for making a false accusation. We will treat everything that's happened as a dramatic spectacle and move on with our lives. What do you say to that? Huh. An argument with near impossible odds, huh? You have to not only refute Farina's claims, but also overturn the long-held beliefs of the people. Well, we're in luck. Because she is a very good actor, and a belief is just a thought you keep thinking. And you know who can change that? entertainers and I don't know who she's putting on a show for but I think it's either Celestia or the old Hydro Archon who's like trying to use her as a sacrifice well I tried to give you the chance to surrender if you must persist then let me ask if you believe I'm not the Archon, then what manner of being do you think I am? And if I was not the Archon, then how did I manage to live for over 500 years? Great question. First of all, you may be a member of another long-lived race which would allow you to naturally possess an extended lifespan. And second of all, even if that wasn't the case, there could be other ways to extend your life. <laughs> Who gave you that idea? Was it the knave? You'd sink so low as to use a harbinger's words against me. A curse. I once thought it possible that the aura of an Archon might naturally resemble a type of curse. But in light of this claim, oh. perhaps what I sensed was not your divinity, but a curse after all. You sensed it too, huh, Nervalette? Well, Archons could be considered demons or fallen angels, and that sounds like, you know, a celestial being that had been cursed to a life of pain. I guess kind of makes sense.
Maybe all the Archons are kind of in prison. Maybe that's the concept behind the Archons. I don't know. Interesting thought. Lady Farina is actually a human? Well, it is true that it's extremely difficult to tell humans and gods apart just by looking at them. It's not impossible. Well, don't start celebrating too early now. Even if I have been carrying a curse like you said, how does that prove that I am merely a human being? Besides, everyone knows that the main difference between a human and a god is the possession of authority. Gods can do what humans cannot. That's why they're worshipped as gods. For centuries, manifestations of my authority have served the nation of Fontaine. One need only to turn their eyes towards the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal in this very opera house, or consider the endemidium that is used in every aspect of life. You tried to reference the Oratrice, but weren't you as confused as all the rest of us when the Oratrice declared Child to be guilty without any proof? Otherwise, you should have come up with a good explanation for that by now. Didn't I make myself clear at the time? The decisions of the gods are naturally difficult for humans to comprehend. There is no need to provide an explanation. Lady Farina, I believe a reminder of your current circumstances is in order. While the court is in session, the principles of justice and the law must come before all else. While you are an Archon, you are also first and foremost the defendant in this trial. You will prove yourself unable to defend against the prosecution's charges if you continue to withhold vital information against the rules of the court. I never thought you'd use that kind of rhetoric against me. That was no trick of rhetoric, Lady Farina. I've merely reiterated the rules of the court. Rules that all should respect and follow. <laughs> So, you neither knew why Child was declared guilty, nor did you understand the structure and operations of the Oratrice. Instead of having been created by you, the manifestations of authority you mentioned have been made by the real Hydro Archon, haven't they? The real Hydro Archon? Well, now you're really losing me. It is true that I did not know why the Oratrice gave out a guilty verdict that day. But the Oratrice handed out that verdict unilaterally, and it has been operating independently ever since it was first created. You can't... you can't argue that just because a divine creation is flawed, that the god behind it must also be no god at all. <sighs> she's still throwing out all kinds of excuses. Seems like she's confident that we won't be able to produce proof that she has no power over the Oratrice. No, but this is interesting, though, because this is how she's going to get out of her contract. This is how she's going to stop being an Archon, the way that Zhang Li was able to get out of being an Archon. He negotiated a contract to end all contracts and gave up his duties, meaning terrible responsibility of being the Geo Archon. I'm assuming it was just like not all fun and games, right? And part of the deal was like, okay, well, since the Northland Bank is taking your, taking something from you, including his noses, the Northland Bank will fund you for whatever money you need so that you can still pretend to be the god of money and, you know, the god of money isn't put out in any way. Even though you no longer have that power, we're gonna, we agree to take care of you. So just like call child or call a fatui whenever you need money. Like, that's how he got out of his contract, was by being like, I will not, I will no longer become a god, and this is the exchange. If Furina can get popular opinion, if Furina can get popular opinion to agree that the Oratrice is corrupt, she can get the whole nation to agree on one thing, 
that a divine creation is corrupt, therefore no longer being divine. Right? Because even a fallen angel is perfect. A fallen angel is just somebody who didn't agree with the rules and got kicked out of heaven. They're still literally perfect beings. But if you can prove that that creation was tainted, you void the contract of that god. That's what I think's happening. My power as an Archon. There are many ordinary citizens in the audience. How can I just carelessly demonstrate the formidable power of an Archon? If that poses a concern, I'm prepared to extend my protection to the audience. Um, you don't need to go that far. Yeah, demonstrate how powerful you are as the Hydro God. I... Uh... Aren't you the Hydro Archon? Mm. Or is it that you can't even wield the power of Hydro, much less the authority of a god? Indemnidium! Yes! It's all because of Indemnidium! All Archons derive their power from the faith of the people, and I've converted the people's faith in justice into Indemnidium. Nice. Thus did I give up all of my divine power to provide everyone nice. with energy for their daily lives. That does explain it. Have you ever seen a more magnanimous god? <laughs> Isn't that a huge stretch? Yeah. No Works. matter how generous an Archon can be, how could they give up all their power? Can a god with no power even still be called a god? What a point you make. It seems like nobody's buying Farina's excuse. Oh no. Hey, come now, everyone. Please don't stare at me as if I was a liar. Don't throw me in the briar patch. Farina, you knew, right? The one that you loved. <laughs> Shouldn't you want to believe in me? Please? You got to believe me if what the prosecutor said is true she really has committed a grave offense did she deceive all of us and all of our parents and grandparents too and then all of our ancestors ever since they were born enough that's enough tell me then if i'm not the real hydro archon then who is i felt that when she said Please, you've got to believe me. She's trying to tell them, like, I'm trying to change the destiny of Fontaine by not having it flood right now. Because the gods say it floods, and this is the only option I see of changing that prophecy, is if you all believe that I'm not a god, and therefore the story of me, a god, doesn't matter, or is, like, corrupted in some way. She thinks this is the only way out, so she's like, please, just do the thing! I felt that. I felt that. Whoever does her voice is incredible. If you have no evidence of another Hydro Archon's existence, nor can you find anyone who can back up their claim to be such, then what grounds have you to say that I'm not actually the real deal? Wow. She came up with yet another argument. Uh, how can we refute her now? Seems like she really doesn't want to give up. We can't prove she isn't the Archon. But we can prove that she's not divine in other ways. If she's only a human, then... They're not trying to offer to tr dis prove that she's human by showing that she'll dissolve in primordial seawater, are they? Does she disappear in it seawater? It's been established that all Fontanians can dissolve in water from the primordial sea. And that means... Since you insist on claiming to be a god and not a human, then there's a method that you can use right here and now to eliminate all suspicions of you being the latter.
Miss Navia, please apply to serve as a temporary attorney for the prosecution before addressing the court. Though you act in partnership with the prosecutor, you must still adhere to proper procedure. Uh, uh, super sorry, Monsieur Chief Justice. I swear this really will be the last time that I'll speak out of turn. Now, I've brought some seawater from Poisson. As everyone knows, a mass of blood struck the area not long ago, taking many lives, including those of some of my closest friends. So, Miss Farina, would you dare to touch some of the seawater? If we are to believe that you are indeed the real Hydro Archon, touching the seawater would have no effect on you. All it should do is strengthen your case. But, if you don't dare to touch it, then we would have basically proved the reverse. Oh, and I must remind you that after the disaster at Poisson, nobody wants to see any more people dissolve. They said if you're not a witch, then don't burn at the stake. And choose the Holy crap. Of admitting guilt. Navia from the Spina di Rasula. The Spina has governed Poisson for many years. I guess her suggestion is valid. If Lady Farina is indeed just a human, she's probably Fontanian like all the rest of us. They're gonna ask Would you to kill really herself? Dare to try? <sighs> I can't breathe right now! Lady Farina, this test has been unilaterally proposed by the prosecution. As it falls outside the realm of standard court proceedings, you possess the right to decline participation. This is savage. <laughs> yeah, they used to drown witches too. I forget what their thing is. Like if you well, weigh this you much, you that. drown or whatever. But refusing to participate is basically the same as a confession of guilt. She's just staring at the water without saying a single word. <sighs> it really does seem like she's quite terrified of it. Yeah, she doesn't know. That could. Only she doesn't be know. Her. What's going on? Is she really planning to... That's not what we thought she would... <sighs> Due to the inherent risk of the test, Lady Farina, you may... I think he can... <sighs> oh. What? Hey! <sighs> okay. I... I'm fine! Look! Look at me, everyone! My hand is still here! Will you believe me now? I really am your Archon! I'm nothing like a normal human who would fall apart as soon as they touch this water! Really? Was this not the most obvious thing in the world? Miss Siegewing? If you are present, Miss Siegewing, please come forward and attend to the defendant. Nice. Siegewing? Don't be nervous. It'll just take a few seconds. Hmm. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That should be enough. Please announce the results of your evaluation to the court, Miss Siegewing. As everyone doubtlessly saw, Miss Farina was displaying symptoms of hyperventilation and flushed skin. These indicate that she was experiencing the adverse effects of exposure to primordial seawater. The extent to which she was affected is the same as other humans when exposed to primordial seawater of a similar concentration. They got a half melusine to testify that she was getting ill as if she was a human because a real melusine can't lie. Thank you, Miss Seedwing. Lady Farina, you may return to the defendant's stand. Oh, wait, what did she just say? I didn't get dissolved. Shouldn't that be enough to prove my innocence? So good. Well, considering your tendency to run from your problems, we did originally prepare a direct sample of the seawater around Poisson. However, after extensive discussion, we exchanged it for a sample that is not concentrated enough to dissolve an actual human. After all, on the off chance that something entirely unexpected might occur, we don't want anyone else to lose their life to the sea. 
Yeah, so out of regard for Farina's life, you secured a low concentration sample and asked the head nurse to serve as an expert witness. It's a great thing that the direct sample wasn't actually used. Farina could have... I... I can't believe... You... Farina could have not known. She could have been smart enough to not touch primordial seawater. Or drugs. Listen to me! Listen to me, everyone! Please don't give me such cold and disdainful looks! What happened just now didn't prove a single thing! She's telling the audience how to think. Think about it! How can you conclusively prove that an Archon can't also be affected by the primordial seawater? When you hypnotize someone, you don't say, don't think about cigarettes, don't think about cigarettes, don't think about cigarettes, don't think about cigarettes, don't think about cigarettes. The mind does one thing. It pictures what it hears. She's telling them, you all need to view me as human. If she can make the popular vote decide this, she can do something. She can get out of this. I don't know if it's going to save him, though. Also, also, if I was really just a human, why would I dare to just put my hand in that kind of water? <laughs> Please, everyone, anyone, just listen to me. I swear, I really am your Archon. I don't think anything she says at this point will sway anyone. The odds are just too stacked against her now. With all the things that have been said, Paimon doesn't think there's any way left for Farina to win. I believe the time for arguments and presentation of evidence has come to an end. If there are no objections, we will move on to the final judgment. I think she's going to make Fontaine think she dies. Just like Zhang Li made Liu Wei think that his dragon form died. <laughs> yeah. She's got to make everybody think the same thing now. Hmm. In my capacity as Chief Justice, I shall now render judgment on Farina's misrepresentation of herself as the Archon of Fontaine. As a human who knowingly <sighs> deceived her fellow citizens, Farina is guilty and free from her fate. Yes, yes, so good. Ah! The oratrice mechanique d'analyse Alice Cardinal to render the final verdict on the charges. She said, I'll be a human with no fate instead of a, a god with a doomed fate. She said, I'll be nobody if it saves everybody. According oh, it's so good! Of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Farina is... <sighs> hmm? Well, what's wrong? What's the Oratrice's verdict? No, the Oratrice also displays a guilty verdict. Isn't that correct, then? However, the exact wording of the verdict is thus. The Hydro Archon, guilty to oh. be punished via the death sentence. They're the, giving a figurative death, death to her as the Hydro Archon. Available sentences? So in history books, the Hydro Archon the will be killed now to fulfill justice. It's been given to the very person we've worshipped as So the, the humans justice. believe the Hydro Archon's no longer there. Unexpected twist. Therefore, she really does become nobody. Therefore, she really has no fate. We Therefore, Fontaine is not truth. doomed. She the seriousness of things, so she tell us the truth. How did things escalate this quickly? This outcome is indeed quite strange. But everyone has to believe on it. According to Fontaine's everyone has to believe it. of justice, everyone has to agree. as well as its recommendations for criminal sentences, is this sentence really oh, is this so interesting. for the crimes that have been committed? So that's how you change yeah, fate, is you get everyone to believe it won't happen? That's a weird thought. You know, the real evil mastermind behind the serial 
Special Disappearances case! <gasps> Indeed. Not only is Farina's sentence overly excessive, the very point of our trial today was also to prove that Farina has never been the Hydro Archon in the first place. But now, the Oratory seems to have deliberately invoked the title of the Hydro Archon. What does this mean? Um, excuse me, if I may interrupt. Basically, what I believe is happening is... Fosalor, Furina, for better word, because I don't know if she has multiple personalities, like with evil ones and good ones or what, but basically, the Hydro Archon is attempting to save her nation, so like she's kind of like the ruler of her nation, and her nation always had like this bad curse or like story that one day the whole world would be flooded and the hydro archon would be the only one left on her throne of tears and it's like how do you avoid that well if you can prove that she was never the hydro archon in front of the whole nation then the nation that prays up to the gods go like well there's no god celestia is not gonna like that celestia can't have that right so you can say, okay, well, we killed the god. And then Celestia doesn't have that, like, I don't know, have, have to flood every... Basically, what we're trying to do is stop the world from flooding. Basically. And Furina thinks she can get out of this contract or fate or job title, if you will. If she can change the beliefs of everyone in this room, basically. She's trying to karma swap, but I'm just not sure if the person she's trying to swap with is real or not. Like, I don't know if like the old Hydro Archon might like be around here or like alive or like, if it's all gonna be a show where Linny and Lynette like swap places with her and like get her out of there. And then she's just like in the witness protection program from now on. Like no one thinks that she's alive. Just like no one thinks Morax is alive. <clears throat> Anyhow. Is the trial still going? Fremine, oh, you finally made it. I assume this means you've completed your mission? Mm-hmm. Any mission Father assigns to me will always be top priority. The Fatui are in on it. Just like the Fatui were in with... Is... That Zhang the Li. first prophecy slate? So the Nave privately arranged for Fremine to try and find the missing slate! I looked everywhere and finally found it at the bottom of the sea. It took me a long time to get around some dangerous stretches of water. But has the trial already concluded? Then... doesn't that mean I've come too late? Oh no. Father will be disappointed in me. Thank you for your hard work, Mr. Fremine. Please allow me to review the record left on the slate. Hmm. Traveler, I believe that you have already seen the other existing slates. I would like you to come here and confirm their contents. And this is the missing puzzle piece for the prophecy of the flooding. Huh? So what do you see? What is it? The previous Hydro Archon releasing her divine power and turning Oceanids into human beings? I believe I have now made sense of the Hydro Archon's crime. It has to do with Fontaine's lost history. Oh. Huh? Isn't the Hydro Archon just guilty of deceiving her people? Oh, wait, no, that's Farina, and we've already proven that she's not the Hydro Archon. Uh, so when you say Hydro Archon, do you mean the real Hydro Archon we've been kind of talking about? In truth, everything that you've encountered in Fontaine up until this point can be traced back to the contents of these stone slates. However, I'm uncertain as to how much sense they currently make to you. An association between the contents of the slates and the events in okay. real life. Let's try to recall the contents of the other three stone slates. Oh gosh. Hydra will do her best to help you remember. 
and the Fontanians were branded with their original sin. Okay. Does this mean that the original sin and the Hydro Archon sin are the same thing? That is confusing to me, but okay. The third slate shows the Hydro Archon sinking into the sea surrounded by many people. Oh. That reminds Paimon, didn't we also watch that happen to someone else? Well, the first slate is the prophecy the Fontanians have been talking about. People dissolving into the sea, the Hydro Archon crying on her throne, and so on. We didn't believe that such a crazy disaster could happen at first, did we? But after that incident, it was just a question of when and not if. The truth behind the serial disappearances of young women can be dissolved by water. Oh boy. Uh this this one maybe? Yeah. We know from the case of the serial disappearances of young women that Fontanians can be dissolved in primordial seawater. And the first stone slate tells us that long ago, the Hydro Archon used her power to turn Oceanids into humans. This might be the reason that Fontanians can dissolve. I'm having a hard time following this, but I, I am invested nonetheless. Her consciousness was subject to justice, or judgment. That's interesting. Again, in line with, if everyone believes, if the popular vote wins. So if everyone believes, like as a group think tank, that one person should be ejected, then they can be ejected, or one person should be taken, then they can be taken. Weird concept, though. They'll dissolve into the primordial sea, but won't cease to exist. Their essence will flow in the seawater, converge, and take the form of an oceanid! Why was Venti there first? Why was there an image of Venti there first? Like, setting free four little angels or whatever. Hmm. The Hydro Archon was sentenced to death in court, shocking everyone present. Hmm. Perhaps this means that her sin was actually Fontaine's original sin. So, to stop the old gods from turning the people into water, the old, full, the old Hydro Archon said, I can dissolve them into primordial seawater, 
and they keep their consciousness and then eventually I can use my hydro power to bring that consciousness together in the form of like a group of people like an oceanid and then I can work my magic and make that oceanid a group of people again and that's how I'll bring my people back so it's kind of like that's what happened and then like the title and like the book written about the hydro archon changed because she like went against the god's decision to punish humankind for i guess i don't i don't know for sinning so then it became the original sin was that the the original sin was disagreeing with the with management so how did that become furina's problem though that i don't understand the hydro archon was sentenced to death in court shocking everyone present perhaps this means her sin was actually Fontaine's. Okay, so the reason that would work is because the machine doesn't just look at her physical body, it also looks to her like history and the title of her history and like the essence of whatever personality or being or ancestor that she came from, right? Whatever ancestor that she came from was guilty, so then her fate is, as the god, is to carry on that curse of guilt. She's always been told she'll be sacrificed. So she is technically guilty because she's still connected to godhood. Navia fell into the water inside those ruins and she nearly dissolved. She was surrounded by the people of Poisson in a court within her consciousness and was forced to take part in a trial meant to make her stay. The eruption of the primordial sea at the fortress of Meripi was the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass no matter what! The prophecy's contents can all be verified by recent events. If we combine what we know together, loads of truths should come to light! They're rewriting history. Right now. This is so cool. They're all deciding to dance a little bit together. Hmm. Huh? Oh, Paimon gets it now! So that's how you can make sense of it! But... Then it feels like we're going to have to share some truly shocking revelations. Let's hear them. The first slate reveals that Fontanians are not real humans. That Fontanians had to kind of get turned into oceanids and then by magic turned back into humans a long time ago. Incredible. Glinny, did you hear that? We're... Not real humans. All Fontanians were originally created by the late previous Hydro Archon, with Oceanids as their basis. The evidence for that can be found in how only Fontanians could dissolve in primordial seawater, and how all the girls Vache dissolved were also turned into Oceanids. Oh, and according to Navia, when she was about to get dissolved, she also saw everyone gathered around for a trial, all of them in the shape of Oceanids. Indeed. Because... because they're all already Oceanids. They've just been magically... What, under a spell to believe they're human? Magically turned into humans? Hmm. Yeah, and it follows from the content of the first slate that she probably angered Celestia by creating humans without prior permission. Yeah, that was a no-no. That no -no. could also explain why the Oratrice judged the Hydro Archon to be guilty. Because they were supposed to, to die. for that ancient sin. Oh! The Hydro Archon's true sin was creating us? Saving you. And yet, after many hundreds of years, the Hydro Archon's creations have turned around to try to judge the Archon within the opera Epicles. The twists of history are often the most unexpected of all. Yeah! Isn't the image 
sculpture just like when Navia fell into the sea? So wouldn't it be trying to show the image of the Hydro Archon also falling into the sea once the prophecy has been fulfilled in the fourth slate? In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Did Paimon get all that right? You've made some keen deductions. I must say, given how much you still don't know, it is impressive that you've already managed to connect so many pieces of the truth. However, while you were able to decode all the information on the slates, they've also been etched with an additional layer of hidden information using a different power source. When we were at the ruins, I tried to decipher the hidden information recorded in the slates. But since we only had three slates at the time, I was unable to come to a full conclusion. Now that the slate collection is complete, I shall make another attempt to decipher the narrative recorded within. If everything goes well, we should finally be informed of the unadulterated truth. Hmm. Well, did you get it? What is he doing I when he does I should that? I share this truth not only with you, but with all the people of Fontaine as well. I will try to briefly summarize it for you. Your hypotheses regarding the origin of Fontaineans and the sin of the Hydro Archon were both correct. In the Fontaine of old, the previous Hydro Archon sensed the yearning of her Oceanid familiars for life on land. The Oceanids were enamored with the beauty and romanticism of human beings, and wishing to have those experiences for themselves, expressed to the Hydro Archon their desire to become of a similar kind. However, even though water as an element is intricately linked with the power of life, the Hydro Archon, as one of the seven, did not possess the authority to create a new form of human life. Not one to give in. She eventually found Authority. a way to create permanent humanoid bodies for her Not familiars ability. by appropriating the power of this planet's primordial sea. She poured primordial seawater into the Oceanid's blood vessels, creating humanoid mimics in the process. But if Fontanians were to ever come into direct contact with water from the primordial sea, the power within their bodies would escape these artificial restraints and return to the sea. As a result, their forms would collapse, and they would be reverted to their original forms as Oceanids. Of course, the Hydro Archon never received permission from the Heavenly Principles to create a new human race. Whoopsie. And thus, the Hydro Archon and all of her creations came to shoulder the original sin of appropriating the power of the Primordial Sea. That is the true history of how the people of Fontaine first came into being. So they're still s sinful so you, and doomed to die I, we were all because their god we into human beings? didn't follow the rules. That's way too much information for me. I think <laughs> I'm just going to pretend that I never heard a single thing. <laughs> Wait, but if that's the truth, we can't let the Hydro Archon be sentenced to death. After all, her only sin was creating us. This really might be too much information for your regular Fontanian, but it does answer a lot of our questions. Alas, your hypothesis regarding the third and fourth stone slates was inaccurate. The slates' respective positions are, in fact, correct. It, didn't the Princess of Flowers do something similar? Where she put her power into the earth to save her people? From something divine and doomed and terrible, right? Didn't the Princess of Flowers like use her power to change the people so that they wouldn't be like affected by the withering? She did the same thing and she was she I don't think she got in trouble for it. Hmm. But she also wasn't an Archon, so maybe that comes with different rules. A key point of the visual on the third slate is how all the individuals depicted in the water are humans rather than Oceanids. Oh, that's an interesting point. They have not been dissolved, which implies that the water depicted in this slate is not water from the primordial sea. 
The nation of Fontaine is the nation of Hydro, as well as the nation of Trials and Justice. Instead of being the literal element, the water in the scene symbolizes judgment and justice. Oh, you that's a stretch. Navia's experience. When she fell into the sea, her consciousness was surrounded by that of many others who intended to hold a trial to determine her fate. Therefore, the meaning of the third slate is that the people of Fontaine shall try the Hydro Archon at the Court of Justice. Okay, we're in a circle around her, which is like a circle of protection or judgment. And they were human. They weren't fishies. It could be interpreted that way, technically. Yes, it refers to our present situation. I think I'm following now. So, what you're saying is, even though we decided to put on this trial to avoid fulfilling the prophecy, in truth, everything we've done has happened exactly as the prophecy foretold. So now, it seems, we're the ones making sure it comes true. Not yet, I don't think. What should we do? I just think the prophecy is the prophecy because it's so hard to get out of. I think we're still... Riding the rails until we need to jump off. Like, we're not at the right exit yet, you know? Like, I don't... I think that by the next Hydro Archon accepting sin for changing people still doesn't mean that there's not a way out. I think they all just have to come to agreement. Huh. No matter what, the prophecy will be fulfilled. <sighs> Is this what it feels like to be a prisoner of fate? If that's the case, does that mean the scene in the fourth slate will also be fulfilled soon? Traveler, I would like to point out another small fallacy in your deductions. About the fourth slate, you probably thought that the eruption of primordial seawater beneath the fortress of Meripede served as the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass, yes? However, I believe that rather than being a sure sign, that eruption could in fact only be a small warning of something far worse to come. As for the root cause of the catastrophe, I believe you've already encountered it once before. What? This eruption was just a small warning of the things to come. We must find the root cause of the disaster. It was both dream and reality. If we're talking about a true culprit, that could only be that thing inside the primordial sea, right? The truth, the original sin, the trial, and the root cause of the disaster. Basically, they're doomed. <laughs> it feels like this is... It feels like this is the prophecy in celestial or hydro form. Yeah, he's like, all right, all these humans gotta die now. I feel like that's what's happening. Is that child? We found him! Okay, get him! Get him! I 
think he pushed whatever doom monster that was back into wherever it came from. Temporarily. Oh. Oh. Bye, buddy. Confirming the prophecy. How did child know, dude? Oh, the Fatui said, some, said something like father or said it's all good or whatever. Maybe the Fatui helped him with that entrance. Maybe it's not real, though, because he had to use a delusion. It's possible he could have found her because he left his hydro vision with Traveler for these last few weeks. Um, when they were trying to find him in prison, they were able to connect with Child through his hydro vision in her dream state. Anyway, it seemed it to me that felt like Celestia was listening and they were like, oh, the Hydro Archon did try to save her people instead of killing them like we told we told her to. Here is, you know, a monster sent from hell or heaven to go finish that job and go kill the people that are sinful or evil or whatever. But maybe that's not what happened. Maybe it's a show. You know? Maybe Celestia is not really awake at the wheel. Maybe I, we don't really know. Haven't heard from them in a while. There's a lot going on. Okay, sorry, just a lot of thoughts. So we've met it at last. I understand very well why it is chosen to make an appearance here. That whale does not belong to Tevat. It is a monster that has traversed the stars, weeping all the while. It has been greedily consuming the energy from the planet's primordial sea using it to grow. That is the main cause for the rising sea levels. And once it has finished consuming all of the energy contained within the sea, its next step will be... You said that when the Hydro Archon first created Fontanians out of Oceanids, she filled their blood vessels with primordial seawater. Precisely. That whale finds the blood of Fontanians nigh impossible to resist. Okay, they're basically... Therefore, when it left the Primordial Sea, it decided to make its food. next stop a packed opera house full of food. Food in the form of Fontanians. Uh, we just barely managed to push it back, right? In that case, won't it come back to target the people again once it's managed to recover its strength? That is correct. Indeed, it is more accurate to say that we should thank that Harbinger for buying us some time. Without him... The whale would have likely come onto land far sooner. From the way he looked, he must have been fighting the creature for quite a long time. It also kind of feels like he that brought it there. Maniac. We've always known that he had a special connection with that whale, but we definitely didn't expect it to help us out like this. Hmm. Anyway, now that we know that this whale is the actual cause of the disaster recorded in the prophecy, all we need to do to stop the prophecy would be to find a way to beat it up, right? It is too late. It had already absorbed too much of the Primordial Sea's energy before we could notice it. At this point, it has become practically integrated with the sea itself. Even if the entirety of Tevat were to be destroyed, it could still survive and swim off towards some other world. That... that's not something I will accept. Hell yeah! We've already done everything we can, and we even found the true culprit. We've come so far. You can't just tell me that the last hurdle is some impossible foe. That's just not fair. Indeed, that's not how a grand performance should end. I'll fight it to the end, no matter what. 
So the prophecy will be fulfilled no matter what, huh? Unless that's not how she witnesses it. The prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. Such a weird concept. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the god's gaze does not fall? Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tavat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. I'm saying, that's what I think Fiorina figured out. If she plays out the part, the prophecy can be done. I believe it is preparing to carry out the death sentence. Okay. I don't know how, but I feel like we're karma swapping. <laughs> I'm here for it. You. <laughs> Sorry. That shocked expression on your face is just too amusing. I couldn't help myself. You are not Farina. Who are you? Ah, the sweet sound of bewilderment. Marvelous. A sure sign that my attempt to deceive everyone was a resounding success. But to answer your question, I am Fosalor. You know, the god. Fosalor? Why did you deceive us? Oh, that wasn't my goal, of course. Goodness, no. But I had to fool everyone else, too, if I was to stand any chance of deceiving the Heavenly Principles. Deceiving the Heavenly Principles? It's all because of that pernicious prophecy. Dreadful, wasn't it? Everyone doomed to dissolve. Fontaine condemned to be flooded. One was not amused. In fact, one was positively bemused when that problem was thrust upon me by my dearest predecessor. That's the former Hydro Archon Egeria for the uninitiated. It hardly gets more disastrous than a preordained national catastrophe, now does it? She knew full well that the prophecy would surely come to pass. And, as one of the Seven, she also knew full well that one defies the heavenly principles at one's peril. So yes, as you have no doubt surmised, it was a rather 
impossible situation that I found myself in. I spent a terribly long time mulling it over, alone on the ocean floor. And I was almost growing barnacles by the time I finally realized there was only one possible solution to this confounding conundrum. I had to outwit the heavenly principles, allow the prophecy to be fulfilled, ostensibly at least, while saving everyone at the same time. <laughs> I'm a genius, I know. I can only assume that's why Egeria chose me as her successor. Although, looking back now, it was hardly the inheritance one dreams of. Between the task of saving the nation, the quotidian duties of the Hydro Archon, and not to mention the original sin of creating a new race of humans, I dare say she left me quite a colossal mess to clean up. Wow. <sighs> but one can only play the hand one is dealt. I did not choose this. Any more than I chose to be one of her Oceanid familiars. So you were also once one of the Oceanids, transformed into a human by Egeria's hand? Yes, I was. I always dreamed of becoming human. And I still do, even now. In my eyes, to be human is to be part of the greatest opera ever known. After becoming a god, I separated my divinity from my body and spirit, leaving behind only a self that was as naive and bewildered as my past self on her first day as a human being. Mm. The me you see before you now is that divinity. And the human counterpart I left behind, I named Farina. She could feel joy, sorrow, and everything in between. She could be as vain and conceited, or as meek and vulnerable as she wished. Her strengths were of a kind only a human could possess, as were her shortcomings. But in my eyes, Farina's humanity was what made her perfect. She was perfectly human in every way. The person I always wanted to be. Anyway, so then I cursed her. All <coughs> part of the plan, of course. The plan to deceive the heavenly principles. <sighs> Do you still remember the final scene of the prophecy? The Hydra Archon, alone, weeping on her throne. In order that the prophecy might appear fulfilled, I invited Farina to be an actress, to play the part of the Hydro Archon in the prophecy. Under the curse I placed on her, so long as I, Fosalor's divinity, continued to exist, she could not die. But nor was she free to live her life in the pursuit of happiness. Instead, she was forced to take the stage in the Opera House, to embrace the role of leading lady, to forever play the part of the god from the prophecy, all to create a deceitful appearance of that prophecy coming to pass. I suppose now you probably understand why your court is called the Opera Epicles. But Farina is only human, isn't she? Even though she has had a long life, her mind is no stronger than that of any other ordinary human being. I cannot begin to fathom what she has had to endure. It must have been torture for her. It has it must have been indeed. really confusing. And although she is, in a sense, me in human form, I most definitely owe her an apology for it. Yeah, you do. It's been 500 years. And she can't and die. All along. Ugh. She's been playing her part in the most unimaginably long, unbearably lonely, and agonizingly painful opera of all time. She had to play her part. So the flooding wouldn't happen. That's wild. So, but why doesn't Celestia know better now? Like, can't they hear us right now? <laughs> I 
Diana's inner world. Hmm. If I can speak directly to her inner world, I can get what I want. I came here for answers. Either way, this opportunity is not to be missed. onto the stage. Now, I understand your admiration for my august self, but I must ask you to keep to the rules. All right, all right. It is not my intent to reprimand you. There is no need to state your name. Just be off with you. Do not distract me from my performance. <laughs> Can you not feel it? I am Fosalor. The eyes of countless Fontanians are upon me. I must, at all times, display the utmost elegance and nobility. So maybe... The light represents the gods being able to see and hear them? The Opera of Black and White. Oh my god. Ah! No. It's just been a really long story, you guys. Okay. Dear audience, the performance is experiencing a technical difficulty, but worry not. The guards shall resolve it soon enough. Horn to oblivion! Okay, now that the gods can't see her, what's the truth? Scene one before a mirror, Fiorina. What? So mirrors can be used to reflect, but they can also be used as portals. Farina. Farina. Who's calling me? Where are you? 
Be not nervous. Be not afraid. I am before you. Wait a moment. You're... mirror me? How can this be? She didn't even know she had a higher <laughs> self. She didn't know she was mirror split. You, huh? you know what? Hmm. That's not bad. Let's go with that. Mirror me. What do you wish to say? The prophecy. Have you heard of it? What prophecy? Oh, wait. I know. I think. I don't know why, but it's in my head somehow. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Oh, <laughs> very good. You know it well. What's going on? I can't seem to remember anything clearly. The only thing I know for sure is this prophecy. Will it really come to pass? <laughs> yes, it will. And that is why I've come to you. Disaster will come to Fontaine sooner or later. Things will develop just as the prophecy declared. There is no escaping it. But doesn't that mean everyone will die? I'm a Fontanian just like them. Will I dissolve too? <laughs> oh, don't worry. I will tell you how to save everyone, but you may have to suffer somewhat. Oh, oh, so there's still hope after all. Goodness, you frightened me. Oh my god. You spoke so much and was She's so pure, she didn't know. As for the Aww. suffering, well, I will admit that the first thing that came to mind was, why do I have to be the one to suffer? But if the prophecy will come true, I'll also die anyway, right? So if I've already met you as my magical meeting in this world, if there were scales with all the people of Fontaine on one side and my pain on the other, is it not obvious where the scales should tilt? <laughs> You truly are the perfect human, my ideal. I suppose this would also be the justice that belongs to you. Huh? Don't worry, it's nothing. Listen well. Fontaine has just lost its Hydro Archon. I need you to play a role, that of the new Archon. Play as a god? That's right. You must begin a never-ending masquerade. You must never let anyone suspect your identity. If you can keep it up, then I shall have my way of defying this prophecy. But should your identity be revealed, then all hope will be lost. But how will I do this? A human assuming the role of a god without being exposed. Don't worry. What you must do is not to turn yourself into a real god. You simply need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Being a human yourself, I'm sure you already know what such an entity would be like. Remember... Your true challenge will not be pursuing divinity, but contending against humanity. Um, I'm still not sure I understand, but I'll try. I'll try to do this. Aww. So, how long am I going to have to play this role? Oof, girl. To accomplish this mission, you will have to stay on the stage for many many years you will endure and not grow old until your task ends but i promise you 
all will eventually end in a magnificent and dramatic trial, and everyone will be saved. A trial? Huh. How exciting. I'll be looking forward to it. Okay, so that's kind of what she originally thought, then scene two, a session speech? This is wild, this is so much. Cardinalise has announced my accession, but this is my first time facing the people. What should I say to most appear like a god? To be honest, I still don't know. Perhaps I should first try to act natural. Ahem! Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the Opera Epiclays. I'm sure you've all heard about how I have taken on the role of Hydro Archon. Indeed, I am Farina De Fontaine, your new Archon. Sometimes I swear she sounds like Quinn from Daria. In truth, I know little about becoming a nation's new god, but it will be my honor to guide you all. As the god Fosalor, the god of justice, I shall do all within my power to lead you into an age of fairness and justice. Once again, thank you all for coming. If you should have any questions or suggestions, please send them to the Maison Cardinalise. The future of Fontaine will require us to work together, after all. This should do it. I thought I might stammer, but thankfully, I was able to convey my thoughts just fine. Okay, and next. That's the new Hydro Archon. Is this some kind of joke by the Maison? I would have thought that a being that surpasses humanity would be a bit more... assertive. <laughs> hey, did you hear that? She even told us to send her suggestions there at the end. Shouldn't gods be all-powerful? She's being so modest. What's the difference between her and an ordinary person, then? If you ask me, perhaps the succession didn't actually happen. She might just be a maison back puppet. Wait, what's going on? She's like Why taking notes as an actor. Suspecting me of being a fake. All oh, right, Mir me said that I just need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Calm down, Farina. Think. Think. What do the people want? How would they imagine a god to speak and act? Assertive, with a strong sense of presence. One who can dispel all doubt. That is the character I'm fated to play. Oh, sweet angel. She doesn't even <laughs> like that character. Oh, that's so cruel. ones such as you are deserving of my rule. Now, I was wondering if some weak puppet were to one day come onto the stage and claim ownership of this opera house, would the children of Fontaine follow them? <laughs> well, it seems that you would all see right through them. Having passed my test, you are qualified to witness wondrous trials alongside my august self here in this opera house. You may consider my previous act a door gift of sorts. I thought it was a debut that suited the atmosphere. Now then, let us be reintroduced. Control that stage, uh, girl. So that was just a performance. How could I have forgotten that we were inside an opera house? Quite shocking, to be honest, but I suppose it's a better look than before. Such a fascinating and bold deity. How wonderful! Your future may yet be bright after all. 
It seems I've turned them around. Best follow this flow and restart my accession speech. My dear people, whether you acknowledge me or not, whether you trust me or nay, I say to you, keep faith in your ardor for justice. We have heard it said that this nation's sins can no longer be washed away. Well, I say that justice is most fragrant when it blooms amid sin. The scales of justice should not weigh heavy in the hands of its god. On one side, it must carry fairness and justice. <laughs> and on the other, praise and applause. <laughs> May law be the prayer on our lips. May judgment be our worship. Let us light the fires and drink to the future of Fontaine. That's really interesting. May law be the prayer on our lips. So, she created Furina, this narcissistic character who would act as a human or act as a Hydro Archon that would probably have to be sacrificed so that the real Hydro Archon could save the people. And the real Hydro Archon doesn't want Celestia to see this. The real Hydro Archon doesn't want to speak to Celestia. So how do you speak to Celestia? Prayer, right? Prayer is just talking to God or talking to gods, right? May the law be the prayer, meaning I don't want to talk to you, so I'm going to send my lawyer. May that be good enough for our communication. Like, she's like... Da, 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 da. <laughs> May judgment be our worship. Okay, I'm required to worship Celestia, but I don't want to. So, if I can get everyone to agree that this is fair, everyone in the whole nation to agree that this is fair, then we can, we can call it good and Celestia doesn't have to come down here and open up a can of whoop-ass, right? Let us light the fires and drink to the future of Fontaine. There is no trouble in this world that justice cannot solve. All that is needed is for you, my people, to believe in it, heart and soul. So long as I, the Archon Fosilor, stand within the Opera Epicles. So long as I stand before the Oratrice, I shall even judge the gods of this world! Okay, so that's how Furina became to be. I'm not really sure how Fossil Lore got to hide successfully, though. Lady Furina, here are today's case reports, as well as a summary of the follow-up for your perusal. <sighs> Come now. Was I not just at the Opera House in person? Leave these kinds of things to Nouvellet. Besides, none of these trials were the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Um, if I may be so impertinent, what kind of trial are you truly looking forward to? A magnificent, dramatic, and wondrous trial. A trial to end all things. <sighs> How could you hope to understand? That's true, I... Fear I lack the ability to grasp your divine thought, Lady Archon. He says, I want to unmask. Right, and do not take what I said before too seriously. <laughs> Go now, do your duties. The trial I await, it will come one day. This is nuts. Lady 
Verena, uh, I don't know what to say. Thank you for agreeing to see me. No need to thank me. Or rather, thank your own sense of perseverance instead. Long have you stood in line to meet me, have you not? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that's just an inevitable consequence of my divine charm. <laughs> All right, Deuteria, is it? How is your son's illness? Uh, you remembered me, and you knew of my family, too. Uh, he is doing much better now. In fact, he is far more of an ardent believer than I. He was the one who forced me to seek an audience with you, and to bring your words back to him. Oh. <laughs> oh, good. Very good. If this should happen again in the future, please do not hesitate to come and tell me. Going down to citizens' homes every so often, while not usual practice, should serve as a fine change of pace. Oh, you're such a gentle and wise god. Thank you once again, on behalf of my son. I just want to point out that the gramophone was behind her when she said that. And there was a spotlight across from her, although it wasn't lit. Like, the gramophone was like listening. I don't know if that represents, I don't know if maybe the magicians represent Celestia. And then the spotlight was like nearby when she was trying to convince one of her citizens that she was really the god of Hydro. Interesting. What a way to tell a history lesson. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, Lady Farina, here are the latest hydrological reports. As for the specific parameters you asked to take note of, I'm afraid things still don't look good. I see. It's as I thought then. As your god, I did already expect this, but I wanted to see how far your human wisdom would allow you to analyze it. All manner of signs indicate that the prophecy will still come to pass. Forget it. That's not something you need to worry about right now. Uh, well, as I understand it, the Fontaine Research Institute is also trying to find a way to counter the rising water levels. Really? Uh, have they found anything? I'm... afraid that they haven't found any effective solution thus far. <clears throat> oh, is that so? Well, no wonder. This issue has reached the realm of the gods, after all. Still, their spirit is praiseworthy. Everything's getting on track. There are no longer any voices of suspicion. Maybe this is fine. I just need to keep going, and everyone will be saved. All right, Farina, don't think too hard about this. You need rest. Tomorrow's a new day. Lady Farina, here are the new trial reports for the latest cases, as well as a summary of the follow-up. Uh, there'll be no need for that. I've seen them already. There's no need to go back over scenes I've witnessed in person before! Lady Farina, I I've waited so, so long for this chance to see you in this manner. Indeed, my dear, loyal citizen. This joyous moment is an honor for us both. So here she is getting better at her job, playing the part. Lady Farina, we're detecting significant hydrological anomalies near Poisson. Understood. Keep monitoring. Keep me informed should anything come up at the Institute. So she's still worried about the flood because she doesn't know. I she doesn't know everything. I think I let anything slip today. I must show the people that there is nothing 
to worry about. I just don't know when these days will end. I feel utterly exhausted. Oh, girl. Best to rest early today, too. No wonder she doesn't go anywhere. She's exhausted. She doesn't even know why she's doing this. She just knows she has to. Jeez. Poor thing. It really does feel like she's cursed, huh? Because she doesn't have the knowledge that her higher self has. She just knows that, like, the water might be rising and it might be a thing and she could, like, maybe stop it. And she, like, doesn't know why. That's so stressful. Lady Farina, it's... <laughs> it's like a dream being able to speak with you up close like this. <laughs> She's I so over it. The first member of our family who was honored to receive an audience with you was Madame Deoteria almost 20 generations ago. <laughs> and what a fine family yours is indeed. It brings me great joy to meet such a faithful believer, a descendant of a line most ardent. <laughs> Surely you exaggerate, Lady Farina. Uh, um, my lady? Hmm? What is it, good citizen? Oh, are, are you crying? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh, really now? I didn't even notice. This must be the overflow of hydro from my person. Well, can't quite help being the god whose dominion is the waters, can I? Mm. <laughs> no wonder. No wonder. A manifestation of your power, then. Oh, Archon, I am honored to have witnessed it. Honored indeed. She's so trapped, dude. That is torture. That it would hurt so much. Have I reached my limit? No. Perhaps I reached it long ago. Today I didn't even notice my own tears. Did they make this character after Britney you Spears? To tell someone, anyone about this. Would that not destroy all I've done so far? I've conducted so many investigations across the centuries, but there's not even a sliver of hope that we might break the prophecy. All I can do is keep heart. I must maintain this pact. It is the only way to save Fontaine. Please, mirror me. You have to succeed. I do not like Fosalor right now. Farina, you don't have to shoulder this burden alone. Although I don't know what you might be keeping from everyone. Your people are more than willing to share your burden with you. Share my burden. <laughs> That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. She doesn't understand. But even if your burden doesn't need to be shared, you can still choose to confide in someone. Just share it with me. I'm what you call a witness. A witness? Huh. Yes. I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. 
And if to that is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> if that's the case... So I think if that's the case, even if Celestia and the gods get angry and kill all humankind and kill all the Archons, they can't or won't kill Traveler. Traveler can be used as a witness. Traveler can be used as a defense of like, no, this is how things happened. I think. She's right. I could confide in her, couldn't I? Yeah, because essentially she's one of the characters that could be here for a long time. So she's an other. She's truly something new that Furina hasn't had access to before. So I think that's why it took Fosalor 500 years, because the Traveler wasn't here 500 years ago! Or at least the nice version of the Traveler that we're playing now that's being so helpful. <laughs> don't play out as expected the people of Fontaine will be the ones to pay the price no Farina you shouldn't be selfish <sighs> but what if what if it's really all right Farina you've worked so hard for so so long Surely it would be okay to put yourself first for once. Just this once. Is it such an outrageous thing to do anyway? To find someone in whom you can confide your frustrations and sorrows? Surely it could not hurt. If you let this opportunity slip through your fingers, it might never come by again. Think about it, long and hard. <laughs> I think she's sharing that with us, that she really did decide to let the Traveler in and confide in her in that moment. I don't know why that's relevant, though. <laughs> no, I have nothing to say. I am Farina, the Archon of Fontaine. Everything will surely get better. All you need to do, dear spectator, is to witness my performance until the curtains fall. So now it's the Traveler's turn to play their part. She's saying the spotlight is on us. The gods are watching. I'm still the Hydro God. I'm still the Hydro Archon. Right? You agree, right? We all agree. So even Farina doesn't know the truth? You've never once let her in on the full plan? Well, she would have to appear human, so she'd be, like, divinely chilled out <laughs> if she knew everything. But yeah, it's pretty cruel. And dang, you took a long time, girl. Yes, it had to be done. To deceive the heavenly principles, you must first deceive yourself. I mean, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know if it's that simple, but okay. She did very well. If she had let yeah, herself she did. falter even once in these five centuries, Fontaine would have been doomed to the most tragic fate. I guess because then the people would see that she's not the real god, and then that celestial whale would come down and eat everyone, like, as soon as her people don't believe in her, is kind of... What she's saying, I think. 
It seems that trusting humanity was the right decision after all. I believe that I understand how your deception works, but that is only half the truth, is it not? Which is why she used a half melazine to deliver the sentence. So good. How would you build on this foundation to save the people of Fontaine? That is the most important thing. Ah, good, good. Of course, the Udex of Fontaine has pinpointed the crux of the issue. I'm sure you've long sensed that the Oratrice is no simple machine, yes? I've always suspected that it had its own consciousness. And Linny did mention that he heard a human voice within the core chamber. Oh yeah! Was it her? It now seems that that person was you. Oh. Hidden within the machine all along. Oh. Am I right? Oh, she was here the whole time! She said I was right behind the TV screen. Oh, shoot. That must have been boring. And then I became one with the Oratrice, taking Fontaine's Gnosis with me. Yes, it would seem so, wouldn't it? She's even dressed like it. Her dress looks like the Oratrice. So she has the, the Hydronosis. Alas, your understanding of this device still lacks sufficient depth. In truth, it is no enactor of justice. It is, in fact, a device created to kill the God of Justice. She's going to kill herself off so that the young, innocent version of her can live on, and so can her people. With the guillotine. That's a that's a blade above her head. The sword of truth, right? That's what swords represent, truth. I beg your pardon. So poetic. Oh, you have it. And to be more precise, not only will the oratrice take down the god of justice, it will also take down the divine throne upon which she has been placed. That's weird. Why? Oh, well. It does kind of look like a celestial nail, though, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, did you think I would be the sort to enjoy peaceful repose while Farina suffered? Well, then what took you so long? My work over these last 500 years has been to constantly accumulate indemnidium within the oratrice. So she was telling the truth about that. She said, I have been putting all of my life force into this, like, radioactive rock that my people can use to make judgments and such. Interesting. But really, some have already discovered that only a small fraction of the energy generated by the device was ever used to provide power to Fontaine. The vast majority has been, had to be, accumulated to enact this death sentence. She said I had to use almost all the power to kill, to kill myself. Okay, well, yep, sure. Wow, that's dark. It was all a part of your plan then. Both the trial and the sentence. Indeed. This power, accrued over five centuries, could have sustained Fontanians for millennia, had it only been used for that purpose. Almost all of it has now been stored within the Oratrice. But only power of this magnitude could hope to destroy the Hydro Archon's divine throne, shaking the rules established by Celestia and breaking through the institution that is the Seven. So the Oratrice's call for death was for neither Farina nor Fosalor. 
But for the Hydro Archon... The destruction of that Divine Throne... If I do not misunderstand your intent, you must be... Returning what's rightfully yours to you, of course. In other words, this was all done to return the authority of the Hydro Archon to the Hydro Dragon of this planet. The dragons did come before the Archons came in the lore. But... No, oh, what? Getting sad again, are we? The authority of the ancient dragons shall soon be yours once more, O oh Hydro Dragon Sovereign. And this is the face you make. <laughs> I don't know that she's allowed to do that, though. I don't think she's allowed to destroy Celestia's throne. I don't, I don't think she's allowed to, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think she's allowed to, uh, destroy government property, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't think she, uh, I think... I think a war's gonna break out if that happens, I feel. All you've done throughout the years is just so you can sacrifice yourself at the very end. I mean, it's not a great plan. I've never quite seen it that way, you know. Even now, I'm quite pleased at how well my deception worked. <laughs> Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry. I must say, had it been within my rights, I would have loved to judge the heavenly principles themselves. Were they not guilty of essentially the same crime? Egeria stole the power of the Primordial Sea, and the heavenly principles stole the power you ancient dragons possessed. I'm saying, so like, won't the heavenly principles like want to start war if you give power to a dragon? I, for my part, am the god of justice. And is it not just that your original powers should be returned to you? Okay! That's a workaround that I had not thought about. Speaking of justice, I have always believed that justice lies in the process of pursuing human existence itself. So, if the theft of the Primordial Sea's might was Fontaine's original sin, then, leaving matters of procedural right and wrong aside, the descent of the Fontanians as humans and their right to exist in this world would be Fontaine's original justice. So she's arguing because the power used to make her was originally stolen from the dragons or whatever, the primordial sea, some, some other place. Since that power was stolen, that power should be its own form of regulation. The power should decide. And because since she chooses, she's the ultimate form of judgment and justice, she can dole out who decides that. I still don't think Celestia is gonna agree <laughs> with that letter, but okay. In other words, existence was Egeria's justice. And to me, justice is the continuation of that existence. Defying the prophecy and ensuring that Fontaine's people shall live on. That should be the justice enthroned over all others. Because the primordial sea was stolen by, by her and her people and her ancestors, then defying the prophecy should be the justice for stealing the, 
the primordial sea. I don't know, it's kind of like going to the United States government and being like, well, since you took this from the Native Americans, we think you should give it back. I feel like that's what she's saying. And I'm like, well, but how? They're not going to agree to that. But maybe she's saying, I have, like, I'm the only one with the power to do this somehow because of her unique position. So she's going to destroy her position behind her. And that's what she's been trying to figure out. I just don't know how she's figured it out. <laughs> At this point, we, whether it be myself or all other Fontanians, have shouldered the burden of this sin for far too long. Eudex Nervillet, the highest judge in our land, when you regain your full power as an elemental sovereign, what verdict shall you pass upon us? So when I was invited to the court of Fontaine to serve as Eudex, I see now that that was your idea too. At last, I now understand the true purpose behind this position. In the beginning, I was uninterested in human existence. But these five centuries of living alongside them have gradually brought about mutual understanding between us. And I have even attempted to feel as they feel. He could decide to kill all the humans in Fontaine right now if he wanted to. By a, simply allowing the prophecy of the waters rising to continue. Since so she's giving the power back to him. Like if he was spiteful, like he could do that. I think he's realizing that right now. You are a devious one, Fosalor. Things being as they are, surely you know that I could never declare them to be guilty. She said that's why I chose a good dragon. Ah! Ah, the hour of my execution is almost here. For the sinner, the curtain call has come. Well, at least she's not sacrificing I know Furina. I may not sound it, but faced with death, I find myself a little afraid. Perhaps this is one thing both gods and humans have in common. <laughs> Farewell, Nervalette. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these 500 years. And because he's the Hydro Authority now, he's going to absorb her sort of Hydro feelings. <laughs> and so will she, because she is a version of her. So she's going to have sort of a, an awakening. I declare, people of Fontaine, your sins are forgiven. Hell 
you. What just happened? Has the death sentence been carried out? Was that bright light some sort of misdirection? I have a feeling that something huge just happened. So I assume that happened on a, some other celestial plane that humans can't really see? I don't know. But since we're all still alive and haven't been dissolved, I assume whatever happened was good for us. It's time to end this. We must mete out punishment to that beast. There is still a monster to fight, apparently. <laughs> Wait, didn't you say just a moment ago that it can't be defeated? Well, we solved the flood first, Paimon. I have gained the strength sufficient to deal with it. Ah! Through certain means, I now have the ability to separate the power of the Primordial Sea from that creature. Uh, uh, okay. We should seize the opportunity to pursue our quarry. <laughs> Win just now? <laughs> Win right now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Traveler, now that the oratories can no longer function, I require an executor to help me mete out justice. She's like, the oratories no longer functions? <laughs> The root of the calamities befalling Fontaine, the beast that enacts the prophecy. Its name is the All Devouring Narwhal. <laughs> Props to that voice actor for saying that with a straight face, okay? Come with me, traveler. The hour of execution has come. Okay. So now we're at. We're with the Hydro Dragon fighting a, an Abyss Monster. We're batting it back out of Tavat. I love it. team for this gotta say not not the best wish i had brought on you got it gotta say the all devouring novel cannot resist its instinct to devour continue to trigger its hostility don't worry guys i got it We're good. We're good. We're good. my power to suppress the truth from within. Yeah, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can do that right now. I don't really have strong enough characters for a big boss fight right now. Can't do that right now. Can't do that right now. Stay alive right now. 
I can't! She can't stand! child. <laughs> Thanks for helping with the cleanup. It should have been my job, but... Oh, well. <gasps> uh, so this is Skirk. This is who turned child into a, a killing machine when he, when he fell into a crack, an endless crack in the world. This is who he met and trained him. And she just tosses him back in the abyss like, yeah, I'll deal with you later. <laughs> ah! She's so strong. She's like the Beto of the abyss. I do not really, I'm not 100% if the abyss is in the primordial sea or if the primordial sea is in the abyss, but I feel like we're on some sort of plane similar to that. It was just supposed to be a short private training session for me. I didn't think that my disciple and my master's pet would start brawling in the meantime. Well, actually, I had a feeling that it would happen at some point. But they bumped into one another earlier than I thought. What a blunder. I suppose I'll have to swing my sword three million times as penance. Yeah, I think she's some sort of celestial being like the Heavenly Principles is. But I don't really understand how that all works. She lives outside of the world of Tavat. I just don't understand who her master's pet is. That power. Who are you exactly? Uh, Hyman has an idea. From what she said earlier, she must be child's master. Skirk, right? It's just that he gave us the impression that she was the less talkative person. <laughs> I simply did not have anything to say to the weak. But you, on the other hand, she just insulted managed child again. to defeat the all-devouring narwhal without using power from beyond this world. So you may speak to me as equals. What sort of person would take an all-devouring narwhal as a pet? I have to agree. It's a strange use of a planet's primordial waters just to raise an all-devouring narwhal. That kind of power is wasted on it. It's not cooperative. It eats too much. And I have more important things to do with my time than pet sitting. The only thing that creature has going for it is its looks. All in all, it fails as a pet. <coughs> you think? Uh, Miss Skirk? Uh, I think you might have missed the point. The point being... almost destroyed an entire nation. So what sort of person is your master? Well, child's master's master. Wait, is that right? Oh, right. So you don't know him. Sorry, I assumed you did. Him? His name is Sir Tologi. familiar with that name huh so master is insufficiently famous hmm. how should I describe him then have you heard of the name the foul the foul still nothing well how about the visionary Vetterful near then or gold vine daughter Oh, we heard about Rhine Daughter. Rhine Daughter made Albedo. Ooh, that one we've heard. Rhine Daughter's part of the Hexen's 
Pickle. She's Albedo's mom, right? Oh, so you do know that name. To be honest, I also heard all of those names and titles from my master. I don't actually know them either. That's a weird sentence to say. But I suppose you understand now, yes? My master is likely a similar sort to Ryan daughter. They are both pursuing some form of perfection. <sighs> so her master isn't Ryan daughter, but her master is someone like Ryan daughter? Wait! Didn't you also mention a visionary person? Clement didn't quite catch their name. Actually, never mind that. I believe it expedient to inform you that the all-devouring Narwhal used up nearly all its strength fighting you. Such roiling hydro energies will prove difficult for the planet's deep seas to digest. As such, the Fontaine back on the surface has most likely been thrown into chaos. In other words, the prophecy that you've been fretting over should now be in full swing. Killing the narwhal caused a storm in Fontaine, but we're not even there. Or that maybe she's saying the hydro energy has to leave the primordial sea because it's not being digested well, so it's returning to Fontaine in the form of a storm. That feels right. What? <laughs> the prophecy will surely come true in a way, I suppose. But. Not to worry. Fosalor has already managed to deceive the heavenly principles. Okay. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only Farina will remain, weeping on her throne. Then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Emergency rescue! It's giving Noah's Ark! Endlessly, so they're able to mitigate damage because of Fosalor executing the Hydro Archon and Look, the Nouvellet being able to seeing. stop it. I think Nouvellet was able to stop the longevity of the flooding. I think that's what happened. It's a miracle! We, we didn't dissolve. The prophecy was wrong! The prophecy was wrong! That's wild. You know, it's funny. Pridesley made that boat. He, he didn't know how to save people. He's like, I just feel like a flood is coming and I'm gonna make a boat. It doesn't make any sense. Right. 
just like Noah did. He's like, God told me to make a boat, and they all called him crazy. And then God flooded the earth, and his family was the only one that got to go on the boat. <laughs> so it ended up being useful, in a way. And she is no longer the Hydro Archon, so she no longer has to, to die alone on her throne. Because the throne got destroyed. Ah! What a m mind... <laughs> the solo renewed! The Sweeney de Rasula tax post-disaster rebuilding. I recently visited Poisson to meet with Miss Navia, spokesperson of the Sweeney de Rasula, and we spoke about Poisson's present and future. Old soil can still give birth to new bloom, Miss Navia stated. Hope is like seeing a small cookie when you're starving late at night. You just need a little of it. <laughs> the Skyship Winglet, Lunar Brain of the Fontaine Research Institute. The various disputes that have arisen on account of Mr. Edwin have suddenly become a shield over the Institute, with Jurier turning out to be a once overlooked hidden gem. I believe the power that Fossilor put into the ore trees to make those like radioactive rocks that we saw that were like exploding those radioactive rocks were also taken and put it into this boat that like Risley was making just kind of like hoping to try to make a difference and he put the rocks in there to make the boat float should his hometown flood and he just kind of did it not knowing if it would really work i feel like that's that's why we have a sky boat I feel. People always call the first researcher mad, but few know what to call the second. And should that latter person achieve a miracle, they would find it all the harder to find a word with which to classify him and his team. Sheesh. Wow, Paimon barely recognizes the people in the reports. Are those really Jurier and Navia? They sound like real big shots. They sound like visionaries. What do you think? Pretty enthralling, huh? The Steambird's idea was pretty simple. With the disaster just having passed, we would print a free edition packed to the margins with good news to calm people down. <laughs> she said it's free, too. Oh my god. Girl. <laughs> the value for these big scoops lies in their inevitable follow-ups. We'll publish further reports and go into the stories behind those people. Edwin's assistant, Jurier, created a true flying ship, while Navia is leading people in the reconstruction of their home. I'm sure that these stories could draw even your well-traveled eye. I'm curious too! Uh, wait a minute. Didn't we watch everything happen from start to finish? What's there to be curious about? Well, we are rewriting history for Celestia's sort of eyes, I think. Especially as a traveler. And that's exactly why I'd like you to come conduct interviews with me. You're the best incubators of news, if you haven't noticed. And also, with you around, I'm sure I'll get to see that duke. <laughs> uh, are you sure? Hasn't he turned you down several times already? Oh, this time will be different. Come on! Let's head to Poisson first, and then make a trip to the fortress. There are some things you'll only know when you get there. A drop of water obtained from within the Colossal... Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Navia! Oh, it's you. What brings you all here? Hey, we're just having a look around. I'm here to update myself on how things are going here. Hmm? Oh, the Fatui are here too. Uh, uh. Uh, uh, let me introduce you. This is Mr. Garunt Snezhevich. He represented the Knave in sending us a large amount of supplies and is helping with our work. Our residents are hard at work as well. Thanks to everyone, work is progressing nicely. We've lost a lot of people, but we're moving forward. That will have to be enough. Hello, Miss Charlotte. I'm a big fan of yours. I especially like that article you wrote last year about Fontaine's stray cats. But if you don't mind, could you not emphasize our role too much in your report? It's not charity we're doing here. 
We just happen to share the same interests as Espina. I don't know how I, I feel about a nice fatui. I'll keep it as simple as possible. Or would you be willing to feature as friendly neighbors? That would be fine. Thanks. Oh, you're back too. How are things? We finished laying down the construction materials. It'll be another hour before the workers are able to go over there. Huh? You need two clients? Well, her reputation's greatly risen after that whole duel business with Miss Farina. So she's here in Poisson to wait out the heat. Uh, all right, all right. She really came here to help me out. There's too much to consider in the reconstruction of Poisson. The Spina has need of more decision makers. And, well, I do already happen to be connected to Mr. Callus. Oh, wait just a moment. Do you mind me asking a few questions? You know, about how you felt before the duel. About what it was like facing down a god. There's lots of exciting material there, I bet. Ugh, forget it. I'm sure you can find a better theme than that, Miss Charlotte. Hmm. Oh, I see you're the same as always. Couldn't you do me a favor, for Navia's sake? Well, if we're talking about doing things for my sake, you might as well just take a few more photos of me. Or of the Traveler. It's better than wasting time persuading Chlorand at any rate. Of course I will. I'm not gonna let her off that easy. All right, then everyone who wants to be in the photo, gather up. And smile! How did it go? Was it a good shot? Did Paimon look cute in it? Not bad. Your addition really helped the composition of the picture. All right, hang on a moment. Let me snap a few more shots. All right, that should do it. I'll be back here later anyway, so uh, let's call it a day. <laughs> You're very quick. Speed is of the essence when it comes to the news, and freshness is the key. Also, not to brag, but I'm pretty good at building connections. Who knows? I might eventually get that interview with you after all, Miss Clorand. Wow, you really do have that never-say-die spirit. I'm impressed. So many Goonie references <laughs> in this game. I'll guess that this is how you got that interview at the Fortress of Maripede. Whoa, you're well informed. Let me make a guess, too. I asked Sijuin, who told Monsieur Nervillette, and he told you, right? That's a... Very complete information chain. In truth, all Monsieur Nevillette asked me was, when did the fortress become so friendly towards the media? I told him that it was best not to speak too soon. There's no guarantee that Ridesley will make a personal appearance. You're right. I've got to treasure every moment I have with them. In which case, I'll be making a move first. <sighs> Stay safe now. And tell me if you hear anything interesting. I'll treat you to afternoon tea in exchange. <laughs> oh, wow, guess we're here again, huh? There's a real nostalgic feeling to this place. Looks like you've been missing us. Duke! Did you come all the way to the entrance to greet us? Of course. I'm here to welcome you and our dear Miss Charlotte, whom our good head nurse recommended to me. It's an honor to finally meet the much-rumored Duke. Thank you for consenting to my visit to the fortress, sir. No need to thank me. But that said, I shouldn't be the focus of your interview. I trust you recall our agreement? Of course, of course. All right, then. This way. Uh, uh. Uh, hmm? Hey, no need to be so nervous. I've already taken all the photos we need. Um, Miss Charlotte. It would seem that Miss Lorvine doesn't want her face to appear beside that of Mr. Jurier, hmm? Sir, please don't say things like that. <laughs> but it looks like dear Mr. Jurier denies it. Might this interview be very important to you, then? No, I, I, I just... This is my first time being interviewed, and I'm very thankful to the Steambird for... <laughs> now, I might not look it, but I actually did meet Mr. Edwin once. And I'll be honest, I enjoyed chatting with you more. You've definitely got more of that genius vibe going on. The boat that brought about a miracle, the ark that saved the people. Why, you recreated a myth back there, like an emissary of legend. Still, if I might ask, where's that flying ship now? Huh. Looks like Charlotte's trying to get herself another exclusive scoop. 
I have to apologize, but that ship is presently in the bowels of our factory. I'm afraid it won't be easy for you to get a shot of it. Really? Well, then in that case, could I have an interview with you to make up for that loss? You already know my answer, I'm afraid. Best you interview our head nurse instead. Or perhaps you'd like to take another photo of this couple of researchers? Did you really have to use the word couple? Oh, my lord. Well, then, two solo photos will do. Is my hair messed up? Please, someone help me have a look. Things sure are getting pretty lively here. Oh, seems like everyone's here. Would any of you like to try this new drink I came up with? <laughs> so creepy. Ah, siege uh, uh, hey, Miss Charlotte. Why don't you, uh, take some pretty photos of our head nurse? Hmm? Uh, sure. Come on, Miss Sejuane. Over this way. Let's find a brighter spot. Huh? Uh, oh, sure. Uh, do I have to smile? So, how have things been at the Fortress? Same old, same old, as you can see. Fontaine's undergone some changes, but this place is still more or less the same. Other than that flying ship, I got a tad too much attention, I think. That's why I decided to let the interview go through. We should direct more public opinions toward the behind-the-scenes heroes. Am I right, Mr. Jerrier? Miss Lurveen? You're too kind, sir. I believe that you too should have your day in the sun. Not that you would want that. Just pity. <laughs> I'll just leave the spotlight to you two. I see. Lots of things happened that day, huh? Anyway, regarding that Harbinger, I'm not sure you remember, but his three young followers are still waiting for his return. He sure did win them over, huh? I'll tell them that there's good news and bad news. The good being that their boss seems fine, and the bad being that they must face extended sentences for abetting his escape. Oh, actually, what about you? Are things gonna change for you too? <laughs> what change can there be? The Fortress will keep chugging along, and so will my duties. As to what Miss Farina's departure will mean for the nation, and if our laws and governance will be transformed, we'll leave those to the folks in the overworld. Hey everyone, the photo shoot's done! Good. In that case, let's call it a day here. Thanks for your cooperation. Come on, Traveler, let's go! Till next time, everyone! There'll be a next time? Maybe! Who knows? I might write a story about the underwater factory next time! Until then! All right, last stop, the docks. I didn't see them! They really are- Navia mentioned that she stayed in touch with Linny and the others after working together. Apparently, they've been at the docks distributing these strange pockets the whole time since. Traveler, Paimon. Ah, oh, and Miss Charlotte, too. Would you like a magic pocket? What sort of gadget is it? It's a wondrous bag that can be used to carry many things. The water level has returned to normal, but if you see any of your things floating around, you can use this to carry them. Or you could trick a friend into doing it for you. Trick a friend? Hmm, I wonder which of my friends would fall for that. You could just make a friend like Fremine here. Isn't that right, Fremenet? <sighs> Is this what you meant by, I'll help you make some more friends? To be honest, that sounds pretty sweet. Could I have your contact, please? Uh, oh, uh, sure. Uh, please, write down my address. You sure are working hard to help Fremenet socialize. He was the one who proposed doing this. He even wants to assist in our magic shows. Yes, I was planning to first introduce Pear as an assistant, and later Fremine himself. In the future, I think we can leave underwater escape magic to him too. That said, would anyone want to see a diver escape underwater? Oh, it'll work out. Every journey begins with the first step. He'll become a part of our show eventually. Uh, Lynette... Could you come over? Miss Charlotte says she wants to take a picture of us. Got it. My, that Charlotte is rather perceptive. She got rid of everyone the moment she realized I had something to say to you. Hmm. 
So, how have things been, Traveler? Father says that you did a great deal during the latest events. She's very grateful for your contributions to Fontaine. Uh, that's all right. We were more than happy to help. So... Oh, I guess you haven't heard. Well... After Lady Farina left, Father and Monsieur Nervilet opened negotiations, during which he gave Fontaine's gnosis to her as a... diplomatic gift. A diplomatic gift? A gnosis? Ooh, the Fatui got another yes, gnosis! I was quite surprised at first myself. But when I thought it over, there were actually a number of things going for it. It could have been done as an apology for the incident with Lord Child, or as thanks for his help in tying the all-devouring Narwhal down. Furthermore, Father did also lend significant aid to Fontaine and Poisson. Well, uh, that's true, but this is a gnosis we're talking about. Doesn't this seem a bit... Uh, irresponsible? He's a dragon. I he was agree, here before the gnosis. But I've also heard that... It seems that Monsieur Nervilet has had a significant change of heart regarding the matter. Uh, so there's some reason for this that only Nervilet knows about? Maybe he just wants I nothing to do with you'll Celestia. I suspect you ask him about that yourself. Ah, yes, speaking of which, I did see him strolling around the entrance to the Fortress of Meripede a while back. Uh, isn't he real busy and stuff? I didn't think he'd have the time for that. But back to the topic. The Gnosis was given to the Knave, right? What about Child? They yeah, what about Child? He to Snezhnaya to recover from his wounds. I hear that the recent disaster really did a number on his health. Aww. That's true. When you think about it, we've had loads of run-ins with the Fatui. To think we'd be allied with them this time. So shocked by such a simple switching of sides? <laughs> Father! Well, well, what do you know? Come to the docks to see how my children are doing and meet the Traveler by chance. Please do not pay my accomplishments in Fontaine too much mind. I would have done them regardless. Now seems like a good point. Now, now seems like a good time to point out, for those of you who are uninitiated, the Fatui are traditionally played by over-the-top stylized actors in an old Italian play called Commedia dell'arte, and the role of Arlecchino is typically played by a man in the plays, which I think is why they've chosen to do a different take on Arlecchino and give them the nickname of father instead of mother. I, th I think it's just simply a nod to the plays. Are you going to take the Gnosis back to Snezhnaya? That is our duty as harbingers, yes. Don't be too preoccupied with sides. The goal of the Fatui concerns not a single place or person, but the entire world. With such a grand goal in mind, it is inevitable that we must wear many masks. Switching my masks is something I've always done. Well, that depends on many things. No one truly knows what the future holds. What good is honesty if you can't rely on it forever? As for you, I very much look forward to our next collaboration. Good things cannot be achieved alone, and you've proved yourselves to be great partners. <laughs> Uh... A vision? <sighs> All right. I'll remember to return it. Thank you for keeping it safe for him this entire time. <laughs> I can't imagine her doing that. And that's a wrap for me. It, huh? Greetings, Miss Journalist. <laughs> uh, um, hello. If I'm not mistaken, there are diplomatic channels I'll need to report to to take a photo of you. That is correct. So forgive me, but I will not be able to serve as a subject in your article. However, feel free to write as much as you'd like about our dear magicians and our upcoming rookie talent. I... I will! The sea breeze is quite pleasant. Oh, I shall continue my walk while the weather remains so agreeable. Farewell. Farewell, Father. 
Oh, she has such an intimidating presence. I didn't even dare to take a picture. Thankfully, I've already wrapped up all my pre-scheduled interviews. Thank you all. This will be more than enough for me to write about, I'm sure. Don't be too nervous. Why don't you take a magic pocket before you go? <laughs> Here, Traveler, Paimon, you take one too. To move things about? That's right. <laughs> Funny. I was giving out magic pockets when we first met too. And what do you know? I'm doing the exact same thing right now. So many things have happened, but the pockets are still the pockets. I guess this must be life. We will all follow our own paths, and serendipity will lead you to your fated friends. All right, then. We'll be handing out pockets in some other districts later, so we'll get going now. Have a good day, you two. I suppose you must have met Mr. Linney. He took the time to greet me earlier when he passed this way. In any case, you came at a good time. I was just considering reaching out to you to set up a meeting, so I may explain some things that I haven't had the time to before. Aw, Pinehead's glad that you remembered. Think, all right, let's have it then. How is Fontaine actually saved? It is strange how words can often leave a bitter taste in the mouth. Yeah, but maybe get to the point, though. To but maybe get to the point, though. Authority of the ancient dragons refers to absolute control over the hydro element. Fontanians were incomplete humans born of Egeria's use of the power of the primordial sea, with constitutions similar to that of mimics. But so long as those primordial energies remain within them, I could use the ancient dragon's authority to grant them true blood, after the fashion in which life was first brought into being on this planet. In other words, when I gave my verdict, Fontanians became true humans, and thus would naturally no longer be dissolved by water from the primordial sea. Pozzolar must have counted on you to make that decision as well. Your verdict was the key to making the prophecy appear to have come true while saving everyone. Yeah, and in a manner of speaking, Pozzolar finally managed to fulfill the original Hydro Archon's wish to turn Oceanids into real people too. It seems from your expressions that you still have more things you wish to ask. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. I have investigated his case along many avenues, and I have learned that he once fell into an unknown chasm when he was young. There, by chance, he awakened the all-devouring narwhal. But whether it be by sentiment or reason, that should not have been enough to consider him the root cause of the disaster. At most, he would have had tangential liability. As for the judgment passed by the Oratrice during the trial, whether it was due to that liability by association, or Fosalor deliberately using him to buy time for us on the assumption that he would be able to hold the creature off, I cannot say. Guess Fosalor had Fontanians in mind the whole time. In the end, it was thanks to her that they finally became real humans. Ah, uh, hang on a second. Paimon suddenly got another question. Back when Fontanians hadn't yet become real humans, were the children they had also transformed Oceanids? Life has always flowed like water. Do you recall how Fontanians would often come to the Fountain of Lucene to pray for children? Yeah! Lynette said the fountain is where all the waters in Fontaine converge! In truth, even those couples did not know that such prayers were no mere custom, but instead a form of ritual. Those Oceanids who were blessed within the spring water would later descend as new humans in the coming months. Uh, Paimon sort of gets it now. Either way, seems like this witch 
ritual won't be of any further use, but it'll probably live on as a local custom. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. I can't remember if we just did Fontaine's future or not. I'm gonna go to Fontaine's Gnosis. Oh, that's right! They say you've given it to the knave as a diplomatic gift or something! Leaving aside their intentionality, the two Fatui Harbingers have indeed done much for us during this crisis. Their sole remaining goal in Fontaine, at least at this point, would seem to be the Gnosis. The Oratrice has ceased to function. The Hydro Archon's Divine Throne is now no more. And I do not need the Gnosis's power. As such, it has lost all meaning for Fontaine. If the Fatui have impure designs, then we might as well accede to their request now, and avoid unnecessary conflict. Ugh, what complicated considerations! Paimon thought you were just giving it to them out of gratitude to the knave and as an apology to Child! Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. You will soon be heading to Natlan, I presume. Woo! Fire Nation! I'm afraid that I have little talent as a travel guide, <laughs> so all I can do is tell you what I know about that land. As far as I'm aware, Natlon can be said to be a nation of dragons. Oh? A nation of dragons? You mean like you? No, I suspect that I would not find myself welcome there. Unlike ancient dragons such as myself, the dragons of Natlon have undergone long years of development and evolution. Large numbers of them have entered a form of coexistence with humanity. Nathlon is also the nation of war. War ravages those lands like an undying flame. There is one other piece of information I got incidentally from my negotiations with the Knave that I believe may be useful to you. The Harbinger known as the Captain has thrown his hat into the endless ring of war. The Captain? Sounds like a real tough customer. Seriously, everywhere you look, there's a Fatui Harbinger doing their thing! I suggest that you fully prepare yourself before going to Natlon. In the meantime, Fontaine's doors will always be open to you. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Uh, hang on a sec. Paimon still got a question about the Gnosis. When we spoke to Linny earlier, he mentioned that your attitude towards giving away the Gnosis had clearly changed. We guess that there might be some reason for it that only you were aware of. Hmm. No wonder the House of the Hearth is the Fatui's intelligence division. They are certainly sharp. So regarding this specific issue, I was just getting ready to share something with you. Uh, what is it? In truth, I exchanged some further words with that lady named Skirk after sending you two back to the surface. It went something like this. Oh? Please, God. <laughs> well, we're going to head topside to see what's going on. You hurry over soon as well, all right, Nervalet? What next? Hmm. The all devouring narwhal isn't here, so I'm no longer getting any interference. I can finally catch the scent of your power, what it's made of. It is the authority of the planet's primordial dragons. But with something very similar to a god's curse mixed in. It's quite a novel blend. I'm sure I've encountered something like this before. What was it again? I do not know what you speak of. Ah, oh, of course. How could I forget? You should have the remains of the Third Descender on your person, yes? Remains? I've never heard of any such thing. Huh. According to your parlance, I believe it may be called a Gnosis. The third well, descender. that much is true. Hmm. After Fosalor's divinity faded, she handed her Gnosis to me. But I fear I have never heard of it described in the manner that you just did. I've been training with my master, the Fowl, ever since I was young. And I have never returned to the surface since. So most of the information I possess, I got from him. It is only natural for those who are greater than humanity to possess a different sort of common sense. Which is why there are so many problems in our attempts to communicate with humans. Regardless, you should probably get rid of objects of misfortune to prevent any disasters from befalling you. To live in itself is a blessing. But once a person dies, the bonds he once had with this world shall all turn to curses. 
What do you mean by that? <sighs> no need to fret. These are just my... personal thoughts. And my reason for no longer wishing to return to the surface. This third descender you refer to, who are they? And when did they die? <laughs> Master never mentioned them to me. Perhaps it just wasn't that important for me to know. If you're interested, though, I could ask him. I'll be sure to pass the answer on to you next time. Next time? You believe we will meet again? I do. Wait. I have a disciple of my own, don't I? He can be the messenger, then. That's what she told me. Whether it would prove useful or not, I wanted to pass that information on to you. The remains of... The third descender? So that's what the Gnosis actually are. Kinda just thought they looked like chess pieces. How could they be a person's remains? All the same, assuming that there was no misunderstanding or special metaphor at play, that is what she meant to say. And she said that it would bring misfortune and that you should check it, which is why you gave it to the Fatui. <laughs> if she speaks the truth, then I would simply be putting Fontaine at unnecessary risk by keeping it here. We believe the Traveler is the fourth Descender. One that Gnosis are related to Descenders. Which is weird because there's more than four Gnosis. Gnosises? Gnosi? I don't know. And two, the one who came before me has already died. I guess that you might already be familiar with this concept. But I did not expect you to be one of them. That means that the Gnosis, which are exceedingly element compatible and can even enhance elemental abilities, do indeed come from the third Descender. Hmm, I wonder. Does your body also possess similar properties? Like, uh... Like being able to use elemental powers without a vision! That does sort of count as special compatibility, right? No, no, let's not think about this stuff right now. It just feels... creepy. Comparing the Traveler to the dead Third Descender and all. That's what you say, but this topic still feels like bad luck! <sighs> Once child recovered, let's get some more answers out of him. Or go look for his master and get the answers that way! I too believe it unwise to make too many blind guesses when information is lacking. The same is true of being at court. Alright. Whatever the case, it seems like the crisis here in Fontaine's over for now! Yes. All of Fosalor's efforts were for this moment as well. But... She sacrificed herself in the end as a god. And she suffered through all those years as a human. Was that really what she wanted? I suppose that would be the mystery of a god's will. I suspect not. But once in a while, I too would guess that if wishes were like the clouds in the sky, they will one day return to the earth as raindrops. Life flows like water, and rain is the final answer. The water levels may sometimes tilt one way or another, but the rain falls fairly upon all. And what, ultimately, is the difference between the rains that fall upon all of us? Ah! <sighs> that was absolutely nuts. Ooh, that was some good lore. That was some good lore. And we found Child. Who is... Just got tossed back into the abyss by his by his master. Um, so that's cool. Um, also, one of Child's attacks is called the Foul Legacy. And her boss is called the Foul. So is Child going to become a boss again somehow? Man. What an interesting character story. Really long quest, a lot to break down, a lot of questions got answered. And I guess we're going to Natlin next. Thanks for being here, guys. I'm gonna go process now. And, and, and eat some and eat something.